Hi students, the RTPs for May 2022 are out. Now, like it happens each and every year, approximately one or two questions out of all the RTPs uh, do not exactly get replicated, but at least the concepts do get. So, let's do these RTPs. Now, this year's RTPs that have been released is a mixture of all the chapters. It starts away with the RI and ROI approach. That is there in chapter number 8 also, that is there in internal pricing also. Nice question whereby some missing data is there. First, you compute that data and then try to be commenting. Then you have a question on ethical considerations of mobile manufacturing companies making the batteries which are going burst. We are thinking what should be done. Then you have a question on environmental management report. That is one of the questions like, you know, that was there in the previous RTPs also, but not exactly same, but on the same lines. Then you have a question on total productive maintenance with two new concepts apart from availability, performance and uh, the quality uh, ratios that we all have done. So, OEE, we will not have to find over there. We have to find out some other things. But those, if you will pay attention to the names also, you will be able to track it yourself. Then you have a question on relevant costing, internal pricing, your standard costing. So, all your chapters. You have a question on target costing also. So, all the, the usual chapters are all there in this year's RTPs. The notes of this, whatever I am using, will be there on our Telegram channel also. The link of that is over here. So, let's start it off with the RTPs for May 2022. First two questions are case study questions. Last two questions are basic questions and in middle all the questions are skill assessment questions. But our skill assessment questions are those questions whereby like there will be some amount of calculation to be done. Once the calculations are done, then you got to be uh, analyzing the data and trying to suggest something to improve the company's performance or try to find out the current flaws in the company. So let's start it off with RTP May 2022. This is your question number one, a concept of your ROI and RI, that is return on investment and residual income approach. Let's start. Integrated Limited, engaged in manufacture of water pumps, pipes of all types in range and sanitary fittings. Okay, so whatever is used in the washrooms up and so on. So all those kind of things. These three businesses, pump, pipe and fittings are managed separately as distinct investment centers. Now, Distinct investment centers, uh, just say, we all have three types of centers. You have your profit centers, you have your cost centers and you have investment centers. Cost centers we evaluate based upon the cost savings. Profit centers we evaluate based upon the profits that they all generate. And lastly, you all have your investment centers which are evaluated based upon uh, the ROI, return on investment. Under return on investment, these guys will have a freedom to purchase the assets that they all can use for their divisions. Okay. Now, Integrity uh, Limited named these divisions as GG, YY, and NN. Okay. Since the performance evaluation of the divisional head and employees working with uh, em an employees working under him or her is linked with the performance using financial measure ROI. So, currently we use a financial measure. All these things are financial measures. No, your ROI is a financial measure of the division. Hence, divisional head as well as employees are trying their level best to improve ROI. So obviously, like, you know, their bonuses up and so on must be linked to their performance and their performance is measured how beta it is measured in a financial way. So financial way in this case is ROI. We all have done many such questions whereby to especially like, you know, when we started away with balance scorecard, we all have done a case study also of that type. If you measure the performance only financially is a short term approach whereby the focus is only on one thing, how to be getting more profits and hence more amount of bonus, not a long term approach. If you're only going to be doing in this case, a financial analysis of the performance. There should be other non-financial measures also. In any case, let's read further. Integrated Limited is recent, sorry, in recent fiscal only started a practice of thorough component-wise profitability rate and investment turnover analysis of ROI. Now, this is important so that appropriate corrective measures can be applied. Okay. Now, these guys are saying what? We started, now we had three divisions which are uh, uh, making and selling three products. So, we try to find out ROI division wise. Okay. But then we do analysis of ROI into profitability rate and investment turnover. Now, I don't think so. It's very difficult. You know, you all had a dew point chart uh, in CA Inter. This is a bit of that particular type only. Return on investment is calculated. How? It is nothing but return upon investment. Now, return upon investment, those guys are analyzing this thing in two steps. Which two steps? They are 
breaking it up into profitability rate that is whatever those guys told now and investment turnover rate okay now so therefore this thing they are uh, bifurcating into two parts now try to be thinking what are these ratios here so profitability rate is your kind of net profit ratio so therefore it should be profit divided by sales into 100 it should be that and investment turnover rate investment turnover all your turnover ratios beta turnover comes on top so turnover means sales sales divided by investment okay i think so this gets broken up into this and this if you will cut this and this you will get profit upon investment so profit means your returns only so currently roi they are breaking it up into two parts beta which two parts one is the profitability rate, one is the investment turnover rate. So therefore, they can try to be finding out that how good is return on investment. Although currently all the divisions are evaluated not based upon the profitability rate, not based upon the investment turnover rate. They are evaluated based upon what they are. They are evaluated based upon ROI only. Okay, let's read further. Management of Integrity Limited is of the firm belief that ROI is best used performance measurement tool. Hence, they completely ignored the newly appointed CFIs, uh, CFOs, advised to use residual income. Okay. In addition to some non-financial performance measures for the performance evaluation. Okay. So those guys are saying like, you know, that the ROI is the best approach. We don't need to be using the RI approach. CFO also said accounting profit has its own set of limitations, but the board is not convinced with this remark too. So the CFO is saying like, you know, even the accounting profits are of no use actually because they can be manipulated. They are short term in nature, so on. Okay, the accounting policies are there. Your uh, accounting standards, your NDA start to like, you know, to interfere in the evaluation. So he's saying that uh, even the accounting profits in reality should not be used to measure the performance, but the board has ignored him. Okay. Integrity Limited provides you with the following table, which is incomplete. Okay. What what you all have? Investment, revenue, income, profitability rate that we all know how it is calculated. Investment turnover, we all know how it is calculated. Return on investment, we all know that also how it is computed. Okay. Then <coughs> required. Identify the reason for poor performance along with advice to improve the scene. Okay. So identify the reason for poor performance. Those guys are saying like, you know, that you find out why there is a poor performance. First of all, we don't even know also whether there is a poor performance or not. Like, you know, we need to find out all the question marks to find out that. Second, if the required rate of return at integrity limited is 8%, then comment on the performance of the divisions using the ROI, sorry, using the RI, that is the residual income approach with the same set of information and compare it against your findings in requirement in A above. So those guys are saying, I think it should be one above. Okay. So what those guys are saying, like, you know, that you find out the performance of the divisions using our uh, approach. Originally, we were using which approach here? ROI. Then third, state the benefits of RI. List major shortcomings of accounting profit. That is the ROI and RI. Why integrity limited needs to use non-financial measures Explain. Now, this part we all have done in balance scorecard also, to be very honest. But then we all will start. Identify the reasons for poor performance. Okay, we shall be doing that. But for that now, I got to be completing this table first. Now, this table I've made over here. I'm trying to be completing this table over here. Uh, profitability rate is this data. Okay. Investment turnover is this formula. Sales upon investment. Now, sales everywhere in this question has been told as revenue. I'll replace that word. That'll be far better for you all. Okay, so sales is nothing but your revenue. So therefore, your revenue over here, your revenue over here. Okay, apart from that, profit word, I guess, is income. Okay, so profit word, I will start to be replacing by income. So exactly, we have the words which are there in the question. So ROI will also be income upon investment into 100. Okay, now this should be quite simple now. Listen, uh, investment 4 crores. You have profitability rate, but beta profitability rate is uh, what? Income upon revenue. You don't have income, you don't have the revenue. So forget it. What data you all have? Investment turnover is two times. So therefore, revenue upon investment will be two times. Investment is how much? Four crores. So I guess your revenue is going to be eight crores. 
Now, 8 crores into 5% will be giving you 40 lakh rupees of income. Return on investment will be income upon investment. 4 lakhs, so sorry, uh, uh, 40 lakhs upon 4 crores into 100. I guess this figure should be coming to 10%. This 10% you all can get as multiplication of these two numbers also. That is a profitability rate as well as the investment turnover rate. So, not a problem. Further. Now, over here, this will be the simplest because this data is there with me. So, let's compute profitability rate first. That is income upon uh, revenue. I think that should be coming to 10%. Investment turnover. Investment turnover will be this upon this, no? So, therefore, two times. So, this, I guess, will come out to 20%. Or 20%, you all can compute also this upon this into 100. Further. Uh, this thing is not there, this thing is not there. But see, income upon revenue will give you profitability rate. That will be nothing but 10%. Okay. Then 6 lakhs divided by the ROI should give you the investment. So, 6 lakhs upon 12% should be coming to 50 lakh rupees. And investment turnover then will be 60 lakhs upon 50 lakhs. That is nothing but 1.2 times. Okay. So, this is your data. Now, this data, no, IC has completed. It has not made any notes or something. The reason because there are no marks for that. Okay. So, in this case, no, this is that table which is all completed. Exactly the same numbers that we all have got over here. Now, see, comment for this. In part one, you get marks for comment, beta. Okay. Not for showing off how good you all can compute that you could have done at, say, inter level also. Identify the reasons for poor performance. Now, poor performance, I don't think so that every department is performing bad here. We'll start away with, now, whenever we all start, no, most important thing that currently the divisions are evaluated based upon what factor? So, they are evaluated based upon ROI. So, which ROI is the best or which particular division? Division Y. So, division Y uh, is performing far better as compared to the other divisions. Okay. The ROI is 20%. So, now try to compare the performance of the other divisions against division Y and try to be saying like, you know, why there is a poor performance of the other divisions. Now, see, when we come to division GG, you all will understand this. It is two times over here, two times over here. See, investment turnover tells you that how much sales you are getting per rupee of your assets. Okay. Example, this is 8 crores, this is 4 crores. So, therefore, you are getting 2 rupees of sales for every rupee of your fixed assets. Fixed assets means investment. So, this thing is at par with the best, 2 times. But obviously, where it is lacking here, this is half of this. If this is half of this, obviously, even the ROI is half of this. So, therefore, if we have to improve this, we have to improve this. If you have to improve this, then in that case, income upon revenue. See, our revenue must be doing quite good. Sir, how do you know that? Because our investment turnover is quite fine. It is at par with the best, but then our income must be low. So, try to give ways and means how to improve the income. Sir, we can try to increase our selling price. Yes, but then the demand might fall. So, ultimately, the income might remain same. You can mention that as one of the alternates. But then, sir... For increasing the selling price, we can try to increase the value of the product for the customer. Try to use your value analysis concept that we all have done in uh, target costing. Try to improve like, you know, the perceived value of the product for the customer. That is one way out. Second, use your activity based costing. Try to cut down your non value added activities and hence try to cut down the cost. The moment you will cut down the cost at that time, your income will start to be increasing or this ratio will become okay. That's it about division GG. Then division NN. Division NN, if you all will see now, I'll rub out this part. Okay. Even this uh, division NN that is there, I'm going to be comparing uh, NN with division Y only. What is same? Our profitability ratio is same. So now don't mention about the cost part. Our cost must be fine. And that is why this ratio is all fine beta. But then investment turnover is not looking good. It is 60% of this and that is why even this figure is 60% of this here. So, sir, then what to do? Then try to be improving down this. If you want to be uh, improving this, there are only two ways. Either increase the revenue by doing something or try to reduce the investments. Okay. So, you should try to improve the revenue. You should try in this case to... Uh, Reduce your investment. Sir, how to reduce the investment? Sell off all those assets which are non-profitable. Example, some machineries are not getting used. You'd start to liquidate them. Okay. 
you have too much amount of working capital shift to just in time systems i say is not written this much but in case you all can that will add lot of value to your answer okay that's it about this part that is part first then part second over here okay part second in this particular case is what part second is all about if the required rate of return is 8% come in on the performance using ri approach okay with the same set of information and compare it with your findings in one above okay let's start to be computing your ri how is ri calculated now we all have done questions on ri r so residual income is nothing but the profit that you all get but from there you start to subtract the minimum return that you all want okay minimum return in this particular case is nothing but your cost of capital okay so whatever is your investment you multiply that particular thing by your cost of capital okay once you all do that that will start to give you your ri now this is like you know the concept of whereby i'm generating profits but i'm using my capital for it on that capital i have some cost so whatever is left with you residual income what is the residue means whatever is left with you okay so i guess this is quite simple to be very honest those guys have given you all the incomes we all have the incomes over here now okay we completed this table so therefore we have these incomes and what did part 2 say part 2 told that uh, if the required rate of return is 8% then comment on the performance using the ri approach okay so therefore uh, from the incomes that you all have take your investment multiply it by 8% that much you all should get only because that is your cost of capital okay so it will be something like 40 lakhs minus 4 crores into 8% beta that 4 crores is my investment investment entails cost so therefore what you are getting over and above that 8% is your residual income that is whatever i have done for all the three divisions division gg division yy and division uh, nn so rr will be 40 lakhs minus 8% of 4 crores that is 8 lakhs over here that is 4.8 lakhs over here and 2 lakhs over here now see now what i will do so therefore you all can directly try to be seen i'm writing over here ranks okay so this is first rank this is second rank this is third rank these are the ranks based upon which approach ri approach but if you'll see up no if you'll see up based upon roi approach based upon roi approach i guess this division was the first one so therefore division yy was the best this was the second best this was the third best okay so exactly you all have all opposite ranks okay exactly now and that is whatever will lead to our comments also because those guys have told that you compare it with your requirement in one above okay so therefore my comments will only be like this based upon ri which division is performing the best division gg but then based upon roi approach obviously division yy was performing the best now why this difference obviously this difference is because of division gg is a very different size department as compared to the other departments sir how do you know that it is different size i think it's a very big division how do you know that sir because investment that we all have done is 4 cr okay this is 40 lakhs only so therefore division y by is very small but division gg is very big beta if your investment is big even if you earn less percentage whatever is left with you that amount will be very big okay so therefore this is your ri now ri usually we all say is a perfect approach but it is a very good approach whereby the size of the departments is same if the sizes are so different no then it makes no sense for us to be in this case computing residual income for comparison purpose yes you can compute the residual income it's not wrong you compute it okay but do not use that approach to judge the performance of the divisions among each other because any division which is very big okay will in end always earn higher absolute amounts but that might not be comparable like you know you all did your chapter of ratios in ca inter why to compare two companies which are different sized companies now that happens under roi approach not under the residual income so that is whatever i have written over here now that is your second part third part third part in this case is what third part is say the benefit of using ri approach now we all have done questions also on this okay if you all see your ri approach is what beta your ri approach is what 
uh are i approaches how much is left with you try to be thinking i am almost saying the same numbers of the question that we all have done okay now suppose there was some division some particular division that was there now that division is doing some business okay mm currently it is earning say 32% roi it is earning this much amount of roi companies coc companies cost of capital is say 18% okay this is company coc this division is doing extraordinary it is giving a roi of 32% which is very good a new project has come forward for this division only now that division if it accepts the new project if it accepts the new project the roi only from that new project no only from that new project suppose is 21% from that new project currently it is earning how much 32% but from the new project it will get a roi of 21% now obviously currently it is earning 32% new project will give a roi of 21% so the new roi old and new combined okay will be somewhere in middle of 32 and 21% suppose the roi now after considering this 32 and 21 the new roi considering the old business and the new business say works out to 28% okay i took say the weighted average of this figure and this figure using some kind of weights that comes to 28% what we all have done in that particular question if you were manager of this division you would not like to accept such proposal why sir my roi is falling no sir it was 32% before now it is 28% sir it is falling no sir okay now there is one thing but as a company you should accept this proposal why because the new project is giving you 28% that is still above company's cost of capital of 18% so therefore this division will get encouraged to accept this this particular project only if we are going to be evaluating this division based upon ri approach ri approach is residual income it sees that how much you are going to be getting over and above 18% okay so ri approach sometimes is very useful to encourage the divisions to perform better and to accept those proposals which give more value or more extra amount to the company that is whatever is written over here the benefit of ri for performance evaluation if residual income is used to measure the manageable performance of the investment center there is a greater probability that managers will be encouraged while acting in their own best interest also to act in the best interest of the company okay so that's what i told so many times such projects will get accepted okay now that is your third part the fourth part list any major shortcomings of accounting profit roi and ri okay now this is quite simple accounting profit is all distorted it gets affected by your accounting policies which in real life is of no use to run the business apart from that the profits that you all get no do not consider cost of equity capital if you all see your final profit considers cost of debt capital because we reduce interest from there okay but we do not consider cost of equity capital roi approach sometimes lacks principles of goal congruence that is exactly the same example i will i was trying to tell you all of that 32% that 21% up and so on okay whereby it is good for the company to accept but if evaluated based upon the roi we might not accept such kind of proposals then you have to say the shortcomings of ri approach also ri approach i just now told you the disadvantage it cannot be used for comparing two divisions which are different size divisions okay it cannot be used for that i think all the shortcomings uh, more or less will be printed over here also while calculating the accounting profit cost of equity capital is ignored unlike the cost of debt a company can generate wealth only when it uh, it earns the return in excess of the required rate of return by the providers of capital which includes both equity and debt accounting profits can be distorted by manipulative choices of accounting policies now this point we all have done in balance scorecard i just told that particular thing also profit is always a very short term concept okay whereby we only try to be thinking that this year i want to increase my profit so therefore many things that might reduce your profit in short run in long run might be very helpful to you example if you follow tqm approach 
total quality management. In short run, your cost will always rise, your profits will always fall. But in long run, that is far more helpful. ROI leads to lack of goal congruence. So that's what I told you all. Then fifth, ROI being an absolute measure is not capable as a tool for measuring the comparison between the differential uh, uh, performance of different sizes. So that's what I told. Okay, then last. This is a good, good question. I think if it will be asked in exam, should be asked around for 20 marks here. Explain why Integrity Limited needs to use non-financial measures. Beta, non-financial measures like you are trying to measure your quality. You are trying to measure the training. Like, you know, in balance scorecard, we all have four perspectives. Only the first one is nothing but your financial measure, right? The other three measures in this case are customer perspective, internal perspective. Apart from that, in this case, you have your future perspective. That is a learning and growth. These three measures are non-financial, but these are long-term measures. A company needs to identify long-term measures, uh, sorry, non-financial measures for long-term. That is very necessary. Uh, you got to be giving the training to your employees. Now, obviously, due to that, your profits might fall. But in long run, you will be able to develop new products. You will be able to develop better methods to make your products. So, non-financial measures are necessary for each and every company. You got to be measuring are the customers happy or not. That is non-financial measure. But you got to be doing that. So, that you can try to be thinking that are you doing good business? Are the customers happy? Once a happy customer, there are many happy customers. But one sad customer will lead to many sad customers. So, non-financial measures are required. You can try to mention all these examples, all these reasons also. Okay. That's it about this question. Now, this question is all about a company which is manufacturing batteries which are used in the phones. So, suddenly the batteries are going burst. This question is about that, mainly the, eth the ethical issues. Let's start. Star Cellular uh, Limited engage, engage in manufacture of mobile handset batteries. One of the battery types which SCL is currently producing is BL5C battery. SEL sells this battery to many handset uh, manufacturers. One of the quality circle team recently discovered an issue with this battery that if it gets heated beyond a limit, it gets burst and causes an explosion in the handset which may harm the user, burn injuries and injury severity score is high too. Means amount of injury that these guys will be getting will be very severe. Management is considering the issue uh upon the following facts so what it is considering now pay attention the engineering team provided a solution that they can change the material that is metals components currently used uh in use with the new materials that is more resistant to heat and has an auto cooling feature so batteries will not become too heated and modify the process of battery uh, to eliminate such incidents of explosions completely but this will lead to increase in the cost of production by rupees 80 per battery. So these guys can rectify their designs. They can use better materials, but that will cause them 80 rupees per battery extra. In order to understand the severity of the severity of the issue, the technical team estimates that in the next month it is estimated that 120 such issues may take place out of 180 batteries. Sorry, 1 lakh 80 thousand batteries that SCL is expected to manufacture and sell. The technical team also suggests that out of 120 such explosion uh, incidences, only 10% cases wherein the users will be able to identify that explosion in the handset taken place due to bursting of the battery BL5C. Now, <clears throat> those guys are saying that next year, no, we are about to be manufacturing 180,000 batteries. Now, out of that, 120 incidences could be of such type whereby the batteries and all will explode. But only in 10% of the cases now, the users will be able to find out that this issue was because of the battery. In the other cases, they might be thinking like, you know, it's because of the mobile problem or something. Okay. Legal team estimates and suggests that if such 10% of the users take a legal action, then SCL will lose the suit. So, if those 12 people are, that is 120 into 10%. In no case, SCL can uh, defend itself. So we will lose that case if those guys will file a case and we'll have to pay rupees 10 lakh rupees as compensation in each case, including the cost of the school. Evaluate the viability of the solution provided by the engineers. Now, obviously, if we are going to be rectifying the battery, one thing that will start to be happening will cost us 80 rupees per battery extra. Pick up your calcium. So 1 lakh 80,000 into 80. 
so therefore 14 lakh 40 thousand will be the extra cost in the next month okay uh this is 1 lakh 80 thousand into how much beta 80 na so therefore this is 14 lakh 40 now this is uh just a second please so this is 144 lakhs i guess okay so this will be the cost this will be the cost of rectifying this thing 144 lakhs but 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 if suppose in this case we let it happen then how many explosion cases might happen 120 but out of them only 10 percent will be able to find out that it is because of the battery so therefore uh, there will be 12 cases only and we will those guys will file a case uh, case on us and we'll have to pay them 10 lakh rupees as compensation so therefore 12 cases into 10 lakhs will make it how much are 120 lakhs so in short run if suppose we do try to rectify the batteries then our cost will be 24 lakh rupees extra but then do remember that there will be bursting issues that will be there so now you try to evaluate okay the viability of the solution provided by the engineer see whatever is the solution that these guys have provided it will increase our cost uh it will increase our cost by 24 lakh rupees that is 144 minus uh that 120 lakhs okay so therefore it will cost us but then if it does start to be costing us then in that case uh see these two things so ic has written over here so evaluation it will cost us 144 lakhs if we lose it uh means if suppose the batteries are defective and those guys will file a case on us that will cost us 120 lakhs so therefore in short there will be extra cost of 24 lakh rupees so all these things you all can write but then apart from this now there are always some ethical issues that you have to be considering it is very important that you manufacture a product that does not harm the uh, user as such like you know we all had done few questions of a company which is using the oil also in the products now all these things if your products are going to be having such kind of a harmful effect and wherever like you know the burning is also very high level then in that case company should be very careful uh, so this is one aspect that is the ethical aspect apart from that the entire brand of this company will start to be going away you have to be very careful like you know that your products are not harming because else the goodwill of the company will get um, uh, will get impacted now every company whenever it does business it should always be ensuring that their products are safe to use and if suppose there is a slight chance that the products are not safe first thing that you all should do that try to rectify that if it cannot be rectified and if it is there in all the products also which are available in the uh, which are available in the market not uh, applicable to this question but something like say the tobacco products or something then in that case put a clear warning on those products but in this case if it is possible to rectify i know that it will cost you but beta that cost no is something that you should be able to absorb it is your fault okay so at that time try to absorb this cost make products which are good else your brand will also be going third unnecessary your company will start to go into the legal cases up and so on now all those uh legal court uh legal cases will require like you know a legal team which is behind them and those cases might pursue for long time so it might not be very viable for the company apart from that there might be certain rules and regulations which the government might come up which might stop the company from producing such kind of products in the future and do remember a great quality product will always lead to great sales in future uh mouth to mouth publicity will be far more so rectify that product as soon as possible and that will help you to gain competitive advantage also you should always remember quality is expensive there's a first thing in tqm that we all learned but then uh, quality is one of the only things that will be selling also that's it that's it about this particular question okay it's going to be a simple question you can write all these points in your words please remember ica does not want you to mug up any points in fact out of five if you can be writing four that's a good job done and to be very honest four points will at least to strike you here so that's it about this question just the last conclusion i'm read, uh, writing uh, i'm reading so overall maybe scl will be able to get more monetary benefit in the short run by ignoring the solution to provided by the engineering team 
but it will tarnish the image of SCL which will hurt the profitability in the long run. Therefore, before taking any such decision, SCL should consider these qualitative factors also. Whatever the engineering team is saying, we do understand it will cost you 144 lakh rupees extra. But then it will be saving 120 lakhs. Net cost, I do understand, is very high. It might be very high, but it is worth doing that. Your products are currently defective. We will have to rectify those products. Even if your cost will increase, it has to be done. Else all these problems will start to be coming. So we'll start away with this uh, scale assessment question or like, you know, mixture of the scale assessment and the uh, case study. Now, before I'll be doing this, I have got one other thing also that I'll have to do a recap. So therefore, we can start away with this. So for your knowledge, we always see this thing that uh, whichever organization is especially in a manufacturing sector at that time we incur a lot of costs. One of the key ingredients of all such costs are environmental costs and these days these things are becoming too important. There is a funda of carbon credits which is there in accounts also that is the amount of emissions like you know that do get generated that is one thing apart from that we are using the natural sources of our planet. So obviously it's a duty to be conserving them and giving black, uh, giving uh, something back to the planet. So all these things were classified in form of environmental cost, which was a statement that was prepared by uh, Henson and Mendoza. We have a chapter number 14 whereby we have done almost a similar kind of a question. Now it is very important that an organization tries to prepare this statement not only say for a legal requirement but also for its own requirement those organizations like you know who are more environment friendly automatically these guys are those people uh, these uh, organizations are those which enjoy a better kind of a reputation example like you know when uh, Samsung in the year 2022 launched their S22 series of the phone that time they all told that the material that we all used uh, in making of the phones, the back covers up and so on, was made from ocean plastic. Okay, the recyclable plastic which goes inside the ocean. They told we are trying to clean the environment. So such things always have a greater impact in the long run. Like you know that we are trying to be more uh, environmental friendly. Most of the companies offer you a buyback, right? Uh, whenever you give them the phones back, they recycle such products. That is good for the environment also. Because if you use the same parts again and again and again, at that time, at least the new parts are not getting manufactured. And that is why uh, Henson and Mendoza, these guys are two people who made an environmental cost statement. They told that let's classify all the costs into four types. First of them are going to be environment prevention costs. Now these costs are those particular costs that will prevent adverse environmental impacts. The examples could be many. Uh, evaluating and picking pollution control environment due to which uh, example uh, incinerator is burning. Okay, uh, incinerator means uh, in Hindi if I will call that it is a bhatti like you know whereby the materials and all are put and then like you know they are melted that is called as an incinerator. So, lot of pollution comes out from there. So, we have a pollution control equipment or something like say a chimney which traps the carbon emissions and does not allow them to go inside the environment. So, all those things will help you to prevent uh, any degradation of the general environment. Then creating environmental policies and committees including the certification, whatever certifications you all take. Uh, the environmental uh, certifications for that you will have to do a lot of things okay that we do this we do this we do this so therefore the environment does not get polluted all those things will be coming as prevention costs let me also relate these things to your uh, chapter of total quality management prevention costs are incurred before the activity okay environmental driven uh, R&D you learn how to be better making the products so therefore the pollution will not happen site and feasibility studies then uh, investment in protective equipment and lastly recycling of the products now this thing please remember it's important okay we try to recycle the old products so therefore because of the new products the pollution is not much there then you have environmental appraisal cost environmental appraisal cost are those which are incurred to find out whatever activities you have done they are in compliance with the environmental standards, policies and laws. <clears throat> in this case, these are all those things which are uh, usually done after the activity or with the activity. Example, you monitor, test, you inspect, you report. 
uh this will also include say the kind of the audit fees up and so on so those things will also be coming over here that i've printed over here performing the contamination test so like you know suppose you all uh did some activity and uh in that uh, some amount of waste went, went inside the river you wanted to find out how much harmful effect it had had so therefore you try to perform a contamination test then all the regulatory compliances that are there uh example trying to be reporting make a reporting statement up and so on those things and improve systems and checks in order to prevent fines and penalties now if suppose fines and penalties in this case you have to be paying that will be coming in external failure cost okay but any improve system in order to prevent fines and penalties will be coming over here now so fines and penalties will take place now if they take place then they come over here okay but anything that will keep a check like you know that fines and penalties up and so on are not incurred okay those particular things will be your uh, appraisal cost then environmental internal failure cost now these are costs from those activities that are incurred within the factory but they are still not discharged into the environment okay these things have not gone into the environment we are trying to recycle the scrap now do remember that you recycle the scrap first first of all why did you generate scrap so therefore it is bad thing for the environment so you try to recycle it it is a good thing that you are trying to recycle but that cost should be as less as possible because you should not generate scrap only disposing of the toxic material suppose like you know lot of waste got generated lot lot of waste you called a guy and you told him that you pick up this material and you go now again that cost is nothing but kind of a internal failure cause this cause is coming because your production was not good and toxic material had come out back end cause such as decommissioning cost on a project completion like one suppose like you know your project was over then in that case you remove your plant and machinery up and so on from a place that place gets destroyed so therefore those costs will also be coming as internal failure cause you should remove the plant and machine in such a way that land is not spoiled it can still grow trees and so on then environmental external failure cost now these costs are incurred after discharging the waste into the environment now these things will have adverse impact on organizations uh, reputation and natural resources so cleaning up the contaminated soil you did something okay due to that the soil uh, erosion happened or suppose the soil got spoiled then you try to clean it up now you should not have done this only but then <coughs> this cost is incurred once the waste goes in the environment okay same way the res uh, restoring the land to its natural state you had a factory okay now you're thinking i don't want a factory over here i want a factory to somewhere else so therefore you left this place but then you thought that you will try to clean that entire place so therefore trees and all can grow now you should have used it in a proper way so therefore such situation would not have come only and then the penalties that you might have paid now based upon this only you have your entire question that we are going to be doing right now now Pay attention, not a very tough question and whatever we all have prepared in this, that is whatever the ICA had done, but you can also solve this question in the way that you all have done in your class also. I'll tell you once uh, the suitable time comes. Listen, SY Industries operates in two different lines of businesses. One is SV Paper Mart and the other is SY Glass Limited. Okay. SPM is a paper manufacturer, deals in different sizes, A3, A4, A5 and GSM. Okay. That obtained ISO 14001-2004 Environmental Management System, revised ISO 14001-2015 and 2015, uh, certification couple of years ago. Okay. So, therefore, we have got a certification. Okay. That we take care of the environment up and so on. The CEO of SPM was committed to environment cost management. At a superannuation, the new CEO had replaced him okay who believes from who believes apart from avoiding the legal consequences there is no sensible reason in considering environmental cost management so the new ceo like you know uh see then ceo of spm so therefore we had a oldest we had a old ceo now that guy believed that you should control your environmental costs okay that was one thing second thing in this case 
was that uh, now he is gone. So at his superannuation means at his retirement. Now he is gone. The new CEO comes. He says, apart from the legal things that we have to be doing now, as such, there is no reason why we should be trying to be doing this. Okay. Why should we try to worry about the environment, the related cost up and so on? So therefore, not much interested. SPM hardly practices the requirement contained in the standard of environmental certification. Now, when we must have taken the certification, we must have told to the government, okay, or to that uh, authority who gives us the certificate that this is whatever we all do to conserve the environment. He says that all these things like, you know, are there in the document only, but they are not practiced in real life. It seems they obtained the certificate to fulfill the legal requirements of different tenders and trade partnerships as well as improving the image only. So therefore, the new CEO is saying we had only done these particular things. Uh, actually, they are saying that they had done this. So they mean the old management had basically done this to get some tenders and so on and to improve their brand image. Okay, further. SGL, now this is the other division because first those guys are told we manufacture papers and we manufacture glass okay so now it's all about glass sgl being manufacturer of glasses use cadmium okay some chemical as per who cadmium exerts toxic effects on kidneys as well as the skeletal and respiratory system it is classified as human carcinogen in red ruby glass a glass containing uh, 0.03 of selenium, 0.06% of cadmium and 0.03% of sulfur to produce a ruby color. Now, uh, this I can try to tell you. Now, this material, no, is uh, cancer causing in human beings. So, therefore, we all use like, you know, for making the glass, they all use this material a lot. At SGL, only red ruby glass is responsible for all the cadmium emissions. But the cost accounting system allocated a portion of this cost to all the products. Okay. The turnover of SGL during immediate uh, previous year was 248 crores, which was 17% higher than what it was a year ago. Okay. So those guys are saying that uh, in this company now, only this red ruby glass okay that we all make which contains that uh, cadmium is responsible for all the emissions all the emissions only although we allocate this cost over all the products that is obviously wrong i think this thing must be happening because we are following absorption costing that is whatever happens if we all follow that absorption costing technique the turnover of sgl during the immediate previous year was 248 crores which was around 17 percent higher than what it was year ago so therefore the sales of the company is increasing uh, that's a good sign further during immediate uh, previous year at sgl cost of disposing the material was 80 uh, cost of disposing the toxic material was 82 lakhs now one thing that i am going to be doing listen whenever i am reading any cost now i would like to classify this cost into prevention cost appraisal cost uh, environmental internal failure cost and external failure cost. So that is whatever I'm going to be doing right now. Listen. So disposing of the toxic material, beta, this is internal failure cost. Internal failure cost. The cost of recycling products was 1.05 crores. Now this is, in this case, your prevention cost because if you recycle your old products then new products you will not produce producing will the pollution will be less in future 64 lakhs is scrap okay is recycling of scrap that is again internal failure cost whatever we all have discussed cost of committee responsible for environmental certifications and formulating organizational policy on the environment proceeding was 24 lakhs now cost of committee any committee that will be formed like you know to frame the environmental policies up and so on will help to prevent losses so therefore this cost in this case will be environmental prevention cost which includes 2 lakh fees for renewing the certification and 3 lakhs for boarding now, any certification fees up and so on is also part of all such costs only are. So, therefore, all these things are also your environmental 
prevention cost only in case you want you can club all these three things or you can keep them separate i'm all okay for that for and other connected arrangements of inspection i'll read this line just once more cost of the committee for environmental certifications and formulating organization policy on the environment proceedings was rupees 24 lakhs which includes 2 lakh fees for renewing the certification and 3 lakhs for boarding and other connected arrangements of inspection team who made visit prior to renewing the environmental clearance certificate so like you know the 24 lakhs was the total cost that includes 2 lakh rupees for the renewal which you might, must have paid to that certification authority and 3 lakh rupees in this case the other uh, incidental cost of the committees okay then environmental monitoring cost and employee training cost was uh, 37 lakhs and 8 lakhs now uh, very important employee training cost is regarding environmental safety so we are concerned with that because we are trying to talk of environmental cost only now monitoring happens with the activity or after the activity so therefore this cost will be environmental appraisal cost okay and 8 lakh rupees is training cost if you train the employees they will produce a product which is not harmful for the environment so therefore this will be environmental uh, prevention cost monitoring cost includes 2 lakh rupees uh, of audit fees now audit fees is paid at the end of the period means after the activity so in any case this is also environmental appraisal cost only you can club it with 37 lakhs because even that is your environmental uh, appraisal cost or you can keep it separate we'll keep it separate that's okay inspection cost of sgl to ensure that environmental standards and their own palace own policy matter is 7 lakhs now inspection will be done once your things are done once your activities are done. so it's done after the activity so therefore it will be environmental appraisal cost right down over here environmental appraisal cost during immediate previous year a penalty order of 75 lakh rupees passed by adjudicating authority against sgl for cadmium uh, emission beyond the allowed limit by the regulator against SG, uh, against this order uh, sgl made an appeal appellate authority upheld the order of adjudicating authority but reduce the penalty to 40 percent so originally we were penalized to the extent of what amount 75 lakh for all these things like you know lot amount of uh, cadmium were discharged into the environment so later on in this case we reduced it matlab the authority we gave an appeal against it and the authority had reduced it to 40 percent so therefore 75 lakhs into 40 percent will make it how much here 30 lakhs okay so this is your question as such okay now we'll go over to the required part evaluate the belief of new ceo of spm now the ceo of spm is saying all these environmental costs are of no use we don't need to be tracking these costs okay you just incur let environment go to hell we are not concerned with that now obviously this belief is not correct most of the companies especially in a manufacturing sector they use the resources of the environment it is their duty to giving back now <coughs> controlling environmental costs is very important for many reasons first you have got a responsibility to towards the environment second these days like you know there is a fund of carbon credits that have started whereby it is necessary for companies to control the amount of pollution third environmental costs have started to play a big part as part of your cost so therefore it is very important to recognize these costs and distribute them among to your products if suppose there is some product which is responsible for like you know whose itself cost is very less but it generates lot amount of uh, pollution we do something like you know to keep that pollution under the control that is one cost second suppose lot amount of waste gets generated from that product and to dispose of that waste we are again incurring cost now all such costs that pollution control cost then the disposing of cost all these costs have to be allocated to this particular product and not to all the products so therefore like you know cost of this product is proper else you will be underpricing this product here so <coughs> this belief that the ceo has is not correct it is necessary uh, these days that like you know you try to talk of the environmental cost and such companies who do try to talk of will obviously be enjoying a better re better reputation also and in case you want to control the cost in future 
इट इज वेरी नेसेसरी दैट यू ट्राई टू कंट्रोल एंड रेकग्नाइज दो कॉस्ट नाउ Suppose you try to be thinking the amount of waste disposal cost is becoming uh, very high. First thing to be done, you recognize that cost as a cost due to your mistake. Then only you will be able to control it. So that's what I've written over here. This is all whatever is there in your theory book also. The belief of the CEO of SPM that apart from avoiding the legal consequences, there is no sensible reason for considering the environmental cost management is. Uh, fallacious and unfounded okay means he's saying that it is false now this all statement that he is making is all wrong in fact apart from the regulatory requirements environmental cost is becoming increasingly uh, important due to the following reasons uh first a carbon footprint measures the total greenhouse gas emissions caused directly and indirectly by a person or an, or an organization obviously and because of i've told in class also in future many countries of the world are considering that based upon the environment okay the environmental effects of your business there might be tax rates also a company who is controlling like uh, apple's uh, headquarters are con car completely run by solar energy now in future such kind of companies will be getting good amount of tax soaps also means tax uh, concessions environmental costs are becoming huge for such companies particularly those operating in highly industrialized sectors such as oil production such significant costs need to be managed now before you manage you recognize such costs no so regulation is increasingly uh, is increasing worldwide at a rapid pace with penalties for non compliance also increasing accordingly so that's it whatever we had to be saying over here these are uh, almost the points that i told in beginning also further comment on the current pattern of allocation of environmental cost pertaining to cadmium uh, em, uh, emissions at sgl that glass department in regard to cost of the products produced by sgl advise the better approach which cost accounting system should be adopted now currently that cadmium okay is discharged at sgl and it is entirely charged to uh, sorry it is charged to all the products that might be because you are following your traditional approach that is your absorption costing approach a better way is that you start to be following activity based costing and try to recognize that this amount of waste is coming from which products such cost should be directly attributable to those products only like that cadmium emission should be directly going to that ruby red glass whatever has been told to us now if you are going to be doing this obviously like cost of ruby glass will be rising but that is the correct way to be doing it because it is responsible for that much amount of waste because if you will not do it and you will distribute this cost over all the products those products will start to get higher cost and this particular product will start to get a lower cost that should not be if this product is responsible for higher amount of waste then in that case you should charge it more cost also we have done a similar kind of comments uh when we all have done one of the questions in activity based costing also whereby there is a incinerator and uh, like you know some cost is incurred but then we charge the cost of the incinerator then to the amount of waste produced okay now that is your second part now the third part prepare a common size environmental cost statement for the immediate previous year at sgl as per the classification suggested by hansen and mendoza you should be knowing like you know that these guys have suggested four bifurcations to equip the management for comparison over the period okay i think i have already classified all the cost here for you i think one thing that i forgot is that this penalty cost is going to be external failure cost okay your uh, <coughs> environmental external failure cost now all these things i've tried to put over here i think it is exactly of the same particular lines okay just i'm reading the statement exactly the same bifurcation uh or what i can be doing i'll start from here one c during the immediate previous year sgl cost of disposing of toxic material waste is 82 lakhs so this comes in internal failure cost you can check in internal failure cost 82 lakhs is there okay then what all is there then recycling products is 1.05 crores so recycling products is nothing but in this case your environmental prevention cost with what logic beta the logic is that if you recycle your old products you will not make the new products much 
so automatically the pollution caused by the making of the new products in this case will be stopped and if you try to think no suppose like you know the mobile segments you know whatever things go in your mobile these days <clears throat> lot of metals go in making of the mobile right now these metals are extracted from the earth if you are not going to be using the old phones and you are going to be always making the phones with the new material you will have to spoil the earth so therefore by recycling the products what you all are effectively doing you are not destroying the earth you are preventing the environment from getting spoiled so that is why it will be coming over here okay further this 64 lakh rupees is recycling of scrap that will be coming in internal failure cost. So, therefore, that is also done. Okay, further. Further, in this case, you all have cost of the committee was 24 lakhs. Now, that included 2 lakhs and 3 lakhs over here. All these things were environmental uh, prevention cost only. If you want to keep them separate, you all can. So, 24 minus 2 minus 3. 24 minus 2 and minus 3 that was 19 lakhs and the cost of obtaining the certification that is this 2 and 3 that has been removed from here has been put over here in a separate way. So that's what I told uh, in in case you all want you can combine them but as a rule no always try to show as many details as possible in this statement this 2 and 3 also you can keep them in a separate way it's not a problem okay further 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 huh environmental monitoring cost was 37 lakhs that monitoring cost will be coming as part of your this cost that is the environmental appraisal cost okay i told you all that further the training cost over here of 8 lakhs if you train your employees properly then automatically they will produce a product which is not harmful for the environment okay so this is done before the production so this will be coming as part of the prevention cost further uh, whatever is told further, inspection cost, uh, inspection cost includes SGL to ensure compliance to the environmental standard and their own policy matters is 7 lakhs. Your inspection is done once your products and all are made. Okay. So, this is done after the things. So, it is always your appraisal cost only. Your inspection cost will try to verify that all the things are in reference to whatever the policies have been set. So, it will be coming as part of this. Okay. Apart from that, uh, there was some audit cost also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, monitoring cost includes that audit cost of 2 lakhs. So, I think this 35 lakhs, no, we must have broken up into two parts with us. So, I think so. Yeah. So, one was the 35 lakhs and the other was the uh, environmental audit fees. Okay. Last thing, I guess, was a penalty cost that was there. With that, it is all over. Now, what you all can do and in fact, if I did not have this answer of the institute, I would have done that particular thing. But I see as written a note, you can be doing that also. All these costs, no, ICA has expressed as a percentage of sales, that is your turnover. So, therefore, the turnover in this case was 248 crores, okay. And 248 crores, those guys, each and every cost has been taken as a percentage of 248 crores. So, therefore, this figure will be 8 lakhs upon 248 crores into 100, blah, 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 blah. In case you all don't want to be doing this, you can exactly do whatever you all have done in class also. What? You can take this number as 100. Okay, sorry. You can take the total cost of 357 lakhs as 100 and compute all the things in reference to that. Okay, so therefore, then this percentage will be what beta? It will be 8 upon 357 into 100. If I did not have the institute answer, I would have exactly done that particular thing only. Okay. Uh, so, this is whatever is your statement. That uh, statement is all prepared. Now, what is our last part? See over here. The last part is, see, in part third, you just had to prepare a statement. We all have done that. Fourth, analyze the environmental cost structure and advice for the management. Let's try to be doing that. Now, see, if you see the cost over here, lot amount of cost are prevention costs. Now, do remember prevention costs in long run go a long way to prevent all other costs. All other costs means all other failure costs. Because these particular costs come because of our failure to control those activities which destroy the environment. 
so in future if companies want to reduce these failure costs no they should always try to be spending more on this now out of 357 uh prevention cost and appraisal cost are 137 plus 44 so these are 181 whereas the internal failure cost in this case will be 146 plus 30 that is nothing but 176 so almost like you know total of this and this is 181 then total of last two is 176 so almost like you know it is kind of a 50 50 percent thing but what i can be trying to be saying whenever whenever you have to try to give the comments now try to be always saying some suggestions so therefore failure cost will fall that is something that you will have to be doing so sir in failure cost company should try to be thinking what better methods we all can have so that scrap will not get produced only what we all can do so that the <coughs> toxic material will not get produced so automatically the disposal cost of those things will be stopping apart from that penalty cost can easily be avoided by trying to adhere to whatever other norms that are there for that if suppose appraisal cost has to be increased you can try to be doing that we basically got that penalty because the discharge of the uh, cadmium was high okay so try to be monitoring those things for that might be this cost will increase to some extent i do understand but if you increase that cost uh, that is the monitoring cost apart from that if you try to redo your manufacturing process by training the employees okay and then by trying to have say uh, the r and d we all have done this thing uh, in the beginning when i started away with this question one of the prevention causes environmental driven r d try to do the r d how to make the products better those things will help you to reduce these kind of costs and ultimately that will help the company okay so that's it you have to be writing in comments okay this question is altogether done So guys, we'll start away with this question. Now, this question is all about TPM, Total Productive Maintenance. Now, let me just try to be recalling what we all have done. It is a maintenance technique whereby we have one objective in mind. And what is that? Try to run the machines, try to maintain the machines in such a way that uh, there will be no unscheduled stops. Machine exactly gives you the performance, exactly gives you the quality that you want. Machines are available to you exactly for the time that you want okay there are no unscheduled stops there are no breakdowns so we try to maintain the machines for that we try to have a concept of preventive maintenance preventive maintenance means we try to have a maintenance schedule say that every week every month uh say that on every sunday or something okay we call a maintenance team they will maintain the machine whether it is broken down or not but then we will maintain it there are three ratios that we have done that uh, will overall try to measure that are you doing your maintenance work in a proper way or not. You all have your availability ratio, you all have performance ratio and uh, then you have your uh, quality ratio. These are the three ratios that we all have done and overall if you multiply them that uh, comes to be known as OEE. Apart from that, uh, when we were doing theory of TPM, we all have done many types of maintenance. You have a preventive maintenance that is you try to have the maintenance schedule so you have breakdown maintenance that is the maintenance that is done uh once the breakdown of the machine has happened you try to repair the machine after it has become faulty then third one in this case uh, that you all have is autonomous maintenance so whereby you teach the workers how to repair smaller smaller things okay small small defects can be rectified by the workers if you train them for the major things you still have your maintenance team then you have two other new forms you have a corrective maintenance and maintenance prevention now, apart from that there is a new one that has started to come out there is nothing but uh, something called as predictive maintenance predictive maintenance means lot of artificial intelligence is put inside your machines lot of data is generated in uh, inside the machines that might indicate that something in the machine is faulty machine has a control system whereby it can monitor like you know uh, inside the machine there is a software that keeps a track like you know are all the parts working properly or not if anything if there is a signal or something that some part is not working then in that case immediately we try to rectify that okay that is called as predictive maintenance 
example this technology is mainly used in aeroplanes today so like you know if suppose any part is faulty there are soft phase that tell you suppose to give you a small kind of example suppose like you know the wheels have to open when the airplane has to be landing now wheels are still inside because it is in the air you might get a message like you know that there is some problem with the wheel so like you know if anything has to be done it has to be done before landing so they, uh, therefore then there can be some technical people inside the airplane at that time whenever it is flying who know that uh, many pilots are also trained for that so at that time they try to speak to the ground staff and uh, like you know ask them what should be done then whatever those guys say these, these guys will be doing it so it also like you know it is a proactive approach it is not like you know it is done after the wheels have not opened it's not like that okay but then it is a proactive approach now we are starting with this question now apart from whatever oee ratios are there now there are two other ratios that will be coming in this question also okay so that's what we are going to be doing divy enterprises is known for quality products and processes across industry it operates two shifts of 9 hours uh, each on 26 days in a calendar month. In its drive for efficiency and enhanced productivity, it adopted the TPM and tried to minimize the six big losses. What? <clears throat> now, if you all remember also, like, you know, when your TPM had started in your theory also, like, you know, there are six losses that happen whenever the production happens. They are talking of those particular six losses. Top bosses in the maintenance, sorry, top boss in the presence of few board members conducted review meeting with the head of the maintenance department, Mr. Hukum Singh, okay, and the head of the production operation, Mr. Karthik Vishwakarma, strong names. Mr. Karthik said breakdown mean trends that is currently in practice under pillar 3 that is planned mean trends of TPM like you know there are few pillars of TPM that if you want you can find out but not much of use to us but one of those pillars uh, is uh, planned mean trends okay so planned mean trends also means uh, preventive mean trends is failed to make an impact in terms of improving the productivity so this concept you now of breakdown mean trends which is part of this like you know like one of the parts of planned maintenance is breakdown maintenance like you know you can maintain the machines every now and then but still there could be some kind of breakdowns okay now once you repair the machine once the breakdown has happened that is called as your breakdown maintenance now that guy is saying like you know that this thing hasn't been of much use to us he further suggested that DIVY must move to preventive maintenance. So, we should completely go over to which maintenance beta now preventive maintenance. So, matlab, this particular thing no, is almost like this only. Okay, your planned maintenance. Uh, in any case, like you know, it's kind of the preventive maintenance only. But let's adopt it completely. He mentioned that during the most recent month, 14 incidences of breakdown happened, which led to a downtime on the assembly of 32 hours on the assembly time okay so therefore he is concerned with this part there were 14 incidences of breakdown which led to a downtime of 32 hours so machines were not working for 32 hours mr sadhanand tripathi who is a board member and engineer by education immediately responded why preventive maintenance and why not predictive maintenance and also raise a con uh, concern how the efficiency of preventive maintenance will be measured now, preventive maintenance can be measured honestly by using OEE also, okay. That is uh, whether your machines are working fine or not. But instead of OEE, these guys have some other things only in mind. Read. On this, Mr. Karthik replied, MTBF and MTTR can be used to measure the efficiency. Regarding predictive maintenance, he told, IT team will be in a better position to suggest the data analytics uh, capabilities. And hence further cross-functional uh, deliberation is required to reach the conclusion. So what he is saying like you know that I will not be able to comment much about that predictive maintenance. Because the IT team like you know will be in a better position to give you that particular data. So that team along with some other team will require some kind of a communication. Okay and means uh, cross-functional. And then they will be able to reach some conclusion. Do remember that predictive maintenance is a very costly affair. Okay, your machines have to be such that they give you the data further. Mr. Hukum Singh opposes Mr. Karthik because the maintenance department is already under pressure and hence not in a practice 
not in a position to practice preventive maintenance okay mr karthik said despite multiple rounds of training the operators are not being able to perform the maintenance on their own under pillar 1 of tpm that is autonomous maintenance hence maintenance department responsible to keep all the machines in order if you will remember under autonomous maintenance what happens beta what happens what happens what happens is that uh, we try to train the workers for all smaller smaller defects we are saying that uh, mr hukum singh is saying like you know that we are not being able to practice that autonomous maintenance also so maintenance department has to do all in each and every small little work okay so therefore forget about that preventive maintenance where they will have time for all these things they are busy in like you know trying to repair every small thing because even that autonomous maintenance is not being practiced properly okay after considering the viability of other sorts of maintenance too corrective and periodic maintenance okay ultimately top boss has decided to shift to preventive maintenance okay for the three months with the condition of review after the third month mr karthik asked to send manpower requirements to cope up with the ever occupancy burden after three months the mr karthik reported that only six incidences of breakdown took place in the recent month third month which caused 15 hours of breakdown now earlier i think one month's data had told you that there was he mentioned that in the most recent one there were these many incidences of breakdown and 32 hours of downtime had happened but now in this case only six incidences of breakdown had happened and 15 hours of downtime had happened okay good so it is reduced to a great extent during the third month production unit remains active only for 14 days due to which uh, due to forced lo lockdown on account of COVID-19. Okay, so quite an old question actually. <coughs> Required. Uh, analyze the effectiveness of preventive maintenance using MTDF, mean time between failures, and MTTR, mean time to repair. Okay. Second, advice. Should DIVY enterprise continue with preventive maintenance or move to breakdown maintenance? See, one thing for sure I can try to tell you, preventive maintenance and breakdown maintenance, both of them will exist only. It's only that if you start to spend more on this, automatically in this case, breakdown maintenance will start to be falling. Okay, that is one thing that will happen, right? <clears throat> so, you should continue with uh, preventive maintenance, no matter whatever. You can try to be thinking how much you spend on that, but it will always be continuing. Okay. Now that I'll come back to once I finish off with part one. Uh, so part one. Now those guys have told compute mean time MTBF mean time between failures and MTTR mean time to repair. Now this is quite simple actually. Mean time to repair. How much time does it take to repair a particular kind of a machinery which has fallen? Example in this third month. Uh, in this case no. How much time does it take to repair this entire thing? So try to be thinking 15 hours of downtime had happened, right? I'll divide it in this particular case by six incidences that will start to give me mean time to repair. How much time does it take in this case to repair? So 15 divided by six that should give me the answer and over there I think so will be. 32 hours divided by 14 mean time to repair here it should be that particular thing only mean time to repair that is 15 upon 6 and that is 32 upon 14 okay now there is one data now mean time to repair i'm asking you should be as high as possible or should be as low as possible think think Chalo, so in any case uh, till that time we'll try to do the other one the other one in this case is what here MTBF. MTBF means mean time between the failures. So, how much hours have gone by between two failures? Obviously, this thing you all will understand. This ratio, higher the better, no? That is very obvious, okay? Uh, higher the better. If there is lot of time between the failures, that means that the machines are working quite good here. So, <coughs> how do you compute that? Now, MTBF is quite simple to compute. Try to be thinking your machines were running for how much time? 
and how many failures happened in middle so therefore that will give you like you know the mean time between failures so that is whatever we must have computed okay so you can try to be seeing mean time between failures describe the average time from one failure to the next failure so mdbf is equal to the operating time divided by number of failures that is exactly whatever i told you then mean time to repair is the average time that it takes to repair something that is uh, either the machine or the tool or assembly line after a failure so therefore it will be total downtime divided by number of failures now that is whatever we must have computed now see we are going to be computing it for two periods earlier what was the status now whatever is the status so earlier machine sorry the factory had to open for 26 days into two hours sorry into two shifts daily that is whatever is told to you right in the beginning two shifts no way here it operates two shifts of 9 hours into 26. So, therefore, this much time is available beta. Okay. So, 26 into 2 into 9 hours and over there 14 into 2 into 9. So, 468 and over there that particular figure will be how much? 252. Okay. Number of incidents 14, 6 that we all know. Downtime we all know. So, from this you subtract uh, the downtime hours. That will start to give you how many hours machines were working. So, therefore, that how many hours machines were working will be called as uptime. So, therefore, it was working for 436 hours. And over here, it was working for this minus this. Okay. So, therefore, 237 hours. Now, MTBF, that is mean time between failures. So, therefore, 436 hours uh, divided by 14 should fetch you the answer. 31.14. Whereas now it has become 39.6. So higher the ratio, it's better no as such here. There is more time between the failures. So failures are becoming less. That is whatever I've printed over here also. In this case, higher the MTF is a preferable reason, is preferable because it represents the time between two breakdowns. It's clearly evident from the table that preventive maintenance results in enhanced productivity. They are trying to be saying that it is good, like you know, your preventive maintenance has started to show good effects now. Your this time has fallen over here. So, therefore, in this case, like you know, uh, <coughs> the preventive maintenance was something that one of the guys was cushioning, like you know, we should be doing it or not, but then you all should be doing it. It can be seen, like you know, that this ratio is improving. Because the time between the two breakdowns has increased from 39.5 hours to 31.14 hours. Okay. <sighs> so now the incidences of breakdown happen after every 29.5 hours. So the other part that is MTTR. MTTR, see the breakdown happened for 32 hours. In 32 hours, this was a total breakdown and number of failures were 14. So this will represent like, you know, the time that it takes to repair a machine or something like that okay so therefore it was 2.29 and but now that particular thing has increased to 2.5 now that will mean like you know that <coughs> this ratio is not looking that good why uh you will read this first i'll come back to that lower mttr is preferable because it represents the time required to repair it is uh, evident from the table that mttr increased 2.50 from 2.29 okay it has increased the most probable reason may be under the preventive maintenance more due care is performed because the maintenance needs to be performed to prevent the breakdown now they have written one thing i'll tell you one other thing also is that first of all these guys are saying like you know that we are spending more hours in this case on the preventive maintenance so therefore, if we are spending more hours on preventive maintenance, so our people, okay, our maintenance department will not be having much amount of time to be doing this breakdown maintenance. So obviously in that case, if suppose workers of the maintenance department are busy in doing the preventive maintenance, then if suppose machines become faulty, there is a downtime of the machines, then what will happen? We don't have people in our maintenance department to repair. So downtime will continue. So, one of the reasons over here will be exactly that particular thing only. Apart from that, these guys are also saying like, you know, that uh, the autonomous maintenance is not happening properly. Okay. If suppose like, you know, the workers themselves could repair, that is one point that you should try to be saying. The institute has not told, but then you all should be writing that thing that might be one of the things that uh, Hukum Singh, I think, so that, that guy told that autonomous maintenance is not happening. 
so therefore <coughs> like you know this particular department is too busy right now okay because the workers are not doing the repairing work so therefore like you know the workers in the maintenance department have to be doing that one sec How, what what is what is the meaning of the term autonomous maintenance your autonomous maintenance is that there are workers in the factory who are doing the production who are using the machine they are only trained to do the smaller smaller repairing work by themselves if suppose like you know this is not working they know what is to be done so therefore machine will work and then there are workers in the maintenance department who are technical people now if these workers will not do like you know the autonomous maintenance that means suppose something becomes faulty they always call these people only that you only do the repairing automatically these guys are overbooked now these guys are overbooked in preventive maintenance and they must be uh, handling the work of many departments so therefore due to that they will not be able to service hence this particular time is increasing okay now that's it about part 1 part 2 i'll read first then i'll be explaining okay advise whether it was what yeah just a sec advise should div continue with uh, preventive maintenance or move to breakdown maintenance now see it is advisable to continue with preventive maintenance because mtdf mtbf improves significantly in time to come it may be possible to reduce mttr2 in order to cut down mttr the training of the maintenance staff is required apart from identification of the critical parts where usually the breakdown happens okay apart from that that autonomous maintenance should be applied also workers should be trained over here okay the workers not only of the maintenance department but also of the factory should be trained in a properly but if after one quarter or two mttr does not come down then divy should consider to moving to alternate that is predictive analysis i told you that is a very expensive thing okay you got to be having all the latest machines which will try to tell you like you know that uh, whatever are the faults that might happen in the machine so on and so forth okay this is important question ensure that you all do it so this case study is a brilliant one uh it is about a retail sector which is manufacturing some clothing some manufacturing company but then it is selling its clothes the apparel through its retail outlets we want to be knowing how these retail outlets are doing example say that you have say any company say zara okay now there is a apparel based company right it manufactures but then it sells its goods through its stores we want to be knowing that how good the stores are performing whatever you're going to be learning over here that in real life also will be of great use to you whenever you're going to be doing the assessment of any retail company let's start paridhan is a ready made garment brand of i'll say vagl only vagl has a chain of retail stores outlets throughout the country wherein they offer a range of ready made garments under the brand paridhan for all the ages genders and regions the decision of pricing and advertisement are taken at a strategic level and the stores are bound by that so we have a company called as vagl it has a brand of uh, paridhan for its uh, <coughs> the goods that it makes that is the ready made garments uh it sells all the types of products for all the ages for all the genders but the pricing and advertisement decisions are not taken at the stores level they are taken at the strategic level means at the head office mr pradeep shukla who is this guy who is a zonal manager of north zone is surprised to notice the variation between the performances of various stores during the zonal meeting the manager of different stores offered their key piece of information which was complex and insufficient to make a proper comparison of the performance among the stores so this guy na he was a zonal manager for the entire north zone he met the stores manager and he got good amount of data from them but that data was very complex mrs sanjay tripathi the chief management accountant of bgl was also present during the review meeting okay so what happened in that meeting let's try to be seeing that uh some of the stores despite being large in size and space 
and holding large quantum of stock were not being able to register the sales comparable to the size so they are saying like you know that some of the stores were very large but their sales was not comparable as compared to their large size sales should also be strong here whereas some of the stores some of the small stores have high conversion and basket size high conversion means like you know that the number of people who visit the stores lot of them purchase our products also that should usually mean conversion i think so conversion can also mean something else that i'll tell you once i'll read the data one other thing basket size basket size in this case will be meaning that how many units are sold in every bill example when i go to dmart say that i purchase 30 thing i purchase say 30 thing that 30 is nothing but basket size that is how many units are purchased by the customer for every invoice okay in case you want to be writing you can write down average items per bill further now this in any case will be coming in the things that we have to be doing also for instant the monthly details pertaining to these three stores located in the same city now this is important same city on different locations are table below sadar bazar central market model town all of them are located in the same city total number of items received items word means what items represent an independent unit that can be billed be t-shirt or uh, trouser socks a uh, sari jean or even necktie and a handkerchief okay so sada not sada sadar bazaar receives 7884 items sir from where did it receive from vagl so vagl only supplies no to the stores each and every item that it received is treated as a single unit it got this much total number of units sold out of this much that it received it sold this much okay total number of customers walked in okay total number of invoice or bills now total number of customers who walked in are also called as footfalls quite a common term i think used these days like you know most of the malls these days they measure the amount of footfalls that is how many people they visit the malls like you know say on saturday sunday will be higher on the other days will be lower total number of invoices or bills total actual sales in rupees target sales in rupees last month sales in rupees okay then store size area in square feet so therefore i think a very large store because the area is biggest mid size store okay and i think this is a smaller store that will be there okay during the strategic meet of all the zonal heads now we had one of the zonal heads of the north zone now during the meeting of all the zonal heads and the top officials at vagl mr sanjay expressed the importance of linking kpis uh at vagl uh to critical success factors and critical success factors in order to attain the strategy we all have done this thing in balance scorecard also hell in detail CSF, CSF are critical success factors. These are the things that you want to be achieving. Whether you are achieving them or not, that will be measured through some data. That data is called as KPI, Key Performance Indicator. Example, you all thought like you know, sir, I have put on lot of weight. I have become fat. My objective in the next two years is to become thin, slim and trim. Okay, that is your objective. That is your CSF. How to measure it? We'll try to use some data. We can use your weight. whether you are achieving the objective or not i got to be using some data it could be weight it could be the calorie intake it could be the calorie uh, it could be the amount of calories that you have burnt it could be how much walking that you all do so on and so forth he stressed to the use of uniform kpi scorecard for all the stores across the nation so that comparison can be made easily so these guys are saying like you know we would like to have set of kpis across the entire country so that like you know it becomes very easy for us to compare hence it was mutually decided to develop set of kpis that can measure stores internal efficiency and performance mr pradeep was interested in knowing how store manager can improve the performance of the stores in terms of set of kpis at his own level without using many resources now this will lead to the part third of the question So Mr Pradeep was interested in knowing how can the managers improve the performance 
in terms of set of KPIs at his own level without using many resources. So therefore, he was interested like, you know, how can stores increase or improve their performance, but not using much of the money or something, not using the advertisement up and so on. He mentioned that quality of a product is a factor that is beyond the control of the stores manager. Obviously, the quality of the apparel is not controlled by the sales manager, it's controlled by a VAGL, right? They manufacture. Required. Recommend the set of KPIs that can be put to use at VAGL and measure the uh, measure and compare the store's internal efficiency. You have to be seeing how good the stores have performed. See, stores are only responsible for selling and nothing else. So don't measure any other efficiency. We have to measure the sales efficiency only, but you can generate so much amount of data here. Comment the performance of three comment on the performance of the three stores based on the set of KPIs by making a comparison inter -sale. So therefore, once like you know you recommend the KPIs. You have to recommend your own KPIs and then comment on that also. Okay, by making a comparison inter se means first store to the second store to the third store, you compare them internally and advise the store manager the marketing initiatives other than quality, pricing, advertisement, and value chain of a product because these things are not controlled by them, they are controlled at the HO level, right? which they can practice in order to improve the performance of the stores in terms of set KPIs without using significant application of resources also state their effectiveness. So therefore you have to be saying some kind of marketing initiatives that these companies or these uh, stores can take but without using lot of resources and these things you can't say only because these are told at the head office and whatever initiatives you say how will it affect your KPIs? You'll have to be saying that also. Okay, see. Now, based upon the data, what what KPIs you all can suggest? To be very honest, you have so much amount of data here. From this data, what you all should do, you what you all should try to be doing. Stop the video at this time. Try to be thinking, sir. From this data, no. What what I can compute, and what will each and everything measure? You should try to be stopping at uh, this time and trying to be thinking. Or what what data I can generate for measuring the internal efficiency of the stores and restart the video once you have thought okay assuming that you have thought now see few things I can directly see I think from point number five point number six point number seven I can do actual sales versus last month sales that will tell me the growth in sales first thing I can compute actual sales versus target sales that will tell me whether I have achieved the targets or not. Okay. These things you all can be doing. Now, so I have told one, I have told two easy ones that should strike you here. Third, third in this case, I think so based upon this metric, no store size. I think we should try to do five divided by eight. This will tell me how much sales we are doing per square feet of the space you know for retail outlets no, this thing matters a lot because if suppose you have invested huge in space you should be getting good amount of sales also okay so i'm going to be doing that is sales per square feet i'm going to be doing that thing also okay this will be the third kpi okay then other things see these are the number of items received out of that this much is sold so this will kind of give you the turnover rate or like, you know, the conversion rate. You can try to be saying that. Uh, so therefore say that 6920, we have sold out of this much. So therefore like, you know, out of how much you received, how much you have sold that also you all can be doing here. Then, so this is fourth, fifth one. Fifth one, those guys had told something about ticket size. Sorry, they had told something about basket size. Basket size means whenever you sell, you have sold these many units. You have sold these many units in how many invoices? So we have sold 6920 units and uh, we have prepared these many number of invoices if you divide this by this no try to be thinking what will that give you that will give you in this case basket size that means on an average customers buys how many units uh, from the stores at one moment of time example i went to dmart as i told and i bought 20 units so in my bill one single bill i'll be having 20 items that is nothing but basket size okay 
then 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 uh what more data can i generate see i have total customer walk-ins fine apart from that i have total number of invoices now this kind of can be giving me like you know that out of how many people who visited how many people have purchased although this is not a very good ratio to have to be very honest see 10,890 people have visited uh, Sadar Bazaar but my bills were prepared only for this much now that reason could also be that like you know 10,890 people had visited but out of them say that five or six were from the same family so therefore technically like you know these are six people but for purpose of billing there will be only one single bill okay so this might not justify if you want to be making a proper ratio then i think what you all should do whenever the customers enter no suppose like you know we all notice that five people have come together you can ask them sir are you belonging to the same family if they all say yes then in that case count them as one single customer so don't take number of footfalls exactly like a uh, footfall being number of visit uh, number of people who visited try to be taking that how many people okay came uh, to shop but counting all the related people as one single person i hope you all understood it. okay then one thing that more you all can be computing this is your actual sales divide that by total number of units sold so what what will that be giving that will give you average selling price you will understand higher is the average selling price good no for the company it is selling those particular products which have higher selling price okay then uh we had basket size i'll give you one other thing i think i have told uh, two more after that but one more i will be saying ticket size what do you mean by ticket size ticket size means i went say to uh, dmart my total bill came to say rupees 18000 okay this is nothing but ticket size Ticket size in real life is total amount of sales that you all did divided by the total number of invoices that will tell you in one bill on an average how much in one single invoice how much you bill the customer okay obviously a uh, higher it is that means the customer shop for a higher figure now these are the eight KPIs that you all can be computing and that is whatever we are going to be writing over here so basket size basket size will represent in one bill how many items you all sell that is one thing second ticket size ticket size in this particular case the last thing that i told that is uh, on an average every bill has what sales value so therefore a total sales divided by total number of bills then conversion rate will signify how many customers actually shop out out of those who walked into the store so therefore that will be total number of bills divided by the total number of footfalls you can multiply by 100 see multiplying by 100 is an option that is left upon you if you multiply by 100 you express it as a percentage else if you don't multiply by 100 then you express it as a fraction of one so that's okay now this thing i've written a note over here also whereby i try to be saying like you know that this is not a very great ratio to have if you want this ratio to become great you should count all the related people of one single family or of group as one single person average selling price okay sales per square feet i spoke that is nothing but your total sales divided by the store size sales through ratio that is whatever i told like you know that uh, turnover ratio how many units you received okay and out of that how much you have sold so therefore number of units sold divided by the items that you received then this month sales versus the last month and this month sales of actual sales that means uh, divide by the target sale now all these you start to be computing and then you try to be commenting over here okay now you have the data you compute that i'm not wasting time in trying to be calculating so therefore i have the information i'm using that information now see I computed the basket size okay for the first store it came to 2.15 second store 2.91 third one 1.39 I'm just trying to make a circle out of the best performing one and a rectangle out of the worst performing one so therefore in terms of basket size central market is doing the best it is selling 3.91 items for each and every bill that is quite high as such as compared to the worst one that is a model term ticket size ticket size is the amount per bill the average amount per bill 
सो टू सिक्स वन सेवन टू जीरो फाइव जीरो वन थ्री फाइव फोर आई गेस सो दिस स्टोर इज डूइंग द बेस्ट वेयर बाय दिस स्टोर इज डूइंग द वर्स ओके फर्दर कन्वर्जन रेट कन्वर्जन रेट कस्टमर्स हु एक्चुअली शॉप मीन्स दोज पीपल हु बाय समथिंग 29.53, 70.25, 96.15. I guess this is the best one, and this is a worst performing one. Now, do remember that these three numbers can be compared directly. Why? Because all of these three stores, no, are there in the same city. If suppose one was a store in Mumbai, whereby you have a concept of nuclear families, and one store in, say, Rajasthan, whereby joint family concept is quite high. at that time these rates will not be comparable because say that on an average in mumbai two people or say maximum say three people say husband wife and kid go to shop together in case of joint family 10 people might also go so therefore there will be counted as 10 people that is number of footfalls okay <clears throat> so this department is performing the best okay this is a worst one average selling price average selling price is the best over here and it is supposed to be the worst over here then sales per square feet i think it is too good over here and it is too bad over here i think one of the reasons it is so bad no one of the reasons it is so bad that we have done very less pay uh, very less sales but i think over here the area was quite huge and over here we have done very good sales and it was very small shop okay only 980 square feet then sales through ratio that is your stock clearance so 0.88 times 0.84 and 0.98 this is supposed to be the best one whereby in this case this is going to be the worst one over here so conversion rates are quite high over here over here they are not very good now as compared to last month this month how good we have done this chore just just like huh? i have messed up the rectangle in this this is the best performing department this is a worst performing department okay for the last month versus this month last month versus this month or this month versus the last month that's fine uh this department has outperformed its sales in as compared to the last month whereas this is performing bad okay as compared to last month this month sales are lower this is somewhere in middle although still better than last month actual versus target this is a only again i have messed up this will be sorry in square then in rectangle then actual versus target as compared to target this is a only department that has performed best okay and this department has performed worse over here that is what we are going to be saying if you want to be commenting further you can try to be saying about each and every stores example say sadar bazaar where it has performed worst it has performed worst in terms of the conversion rates i think this is a very big problem with them so number of footfalls that it is getting out of that how many people are actually buying is very less so the company the store manager should be doing something try to have better salesmen try to convince the customers better that thing okay let's come over to central market so it is doing very good over here so its basket size is quite good uh ticket size is somewhere in middle so i'll not comment conversion rate is somewhere in middle i'll not be commenting on that okay then average selling price i think is very poor so therefore company should try to be thinking how to be increasing the average selling price might be it needs to sell like you know more premium products then sales per square feet i think i have done reverse over here beta okay this should be a round one this should be a rectangular one okay in terms of sales per square feet also the sales was okay i'm not saying too pathetic but in terms of the area it is really pathetic so therefore company should try to buck up with the sales now for that there are some initiatives that you can be taking that i'll be commenting in part 3 sales through ratio is also very bad here it is only 0.8 worse as compared to all the stores whatever items it is getting it is not being able to sell them as compared to the other departments further as compared to last month its sales are not met in the current month so this month sales are lower as compared to the last month and even the targets are not met so you know the problem areas are everywhere average selling price is less sales per square feet is very less apart from that the conversion ratio is also not very good okay now 
the last one that is uh, model town i think model town has got lot of round so therefore that uh, stores is doing quite good except the problem area is over here and over here ticket size is very less apart from that basket size is also quite less now in this case companies should try to do something to be improving them so what what we can be doing that i'll try to tell you all in the next part but it is strong at most of the places here its conversion ratio is superb sales per square feet is the best it is very high as compared to the other stores so therefore it's a small store with only 980 square feet but doing phenomenal sales apart from that i think as compared to last month it is doing very good apart from that in this case uh, as compared to targets also it has done very good few problem areas that i told uh, one is the basket size and the other thing is the ticket size uh, whereby it needs to be improving that is whatever i must have told over here okay now then whenever those guys will ask you now what initiative stores can take at the store level only at the store level without investing much of the resources that is what i was asked in part 3 then you should always be seeing this you can either upsell cross sell or add on sell now what do you mean by upsell what do you mean by cross selling simple words upselling a customer went to buy say a oppo phone okay the salesman convinced him to buy iphone that is upselling customer had to be buying one unit we sold him one unit only but he had to buy phone of 20000 Salesman sold him the same, like you know, uh, the phone only, but of say eighty thousand. That is upsell. You sell a premium product instead of a budget product. What do you mean by cross selling? A customer had come to buy phone. We told take the wireless earphones also. That is cross selling. Sell a related product. Do remember when you cross sell, no. Instead of one unit, now you will be selling two units. Okay. in case of upselling you had to sell one unit only you sell one unit only but you sell the item of a higher value okay apart from that in case of cross sell customer had come to buy one unit but you sell him one more unit which is related to this add on selling customer had come to buy a phone you told you should buy a mixi for your wife also sir she will become very happy so instead of buying one product the customer is ultimately buying two uh, two products but then that product might be or might not be related to the current product that is called as add on selling okay now how will these three things affect all these kpis that you had mentioned that is what you have to be saying in end so one thing that you all can be doing pause again the video over here and try to be thinking if you upsell what will happen to your basket size will it increase decrease not affected or sir depends upon the situation these are the four options that you all have and you have to be thinking like you know if you upsell what will happen to basket size if you cross sell what will happen to the basket size if you add on sell then what will happen to the basket size so you got to be thinking that okay what will happen means either it will increase or it will decrease or it will not get affected or it depends upon the situation so pause the video now and try to be completing this table without seeing this okay this is whatever you have to be writing in the table okay now see average bar uh, you should stop the video now and then uh, restart once you have yourself try to be thinking see average basket size that means how many units are sold in each and every bill obviously if you upsell number of items that you are selling are not changing you are selling a premium item okay so therefore number of items don't get impacted here so therefore no impact but obviously due to cross selling and add on selling you are selling more units so average basket size will improve okay instead of one one unit you are selling two units so then average ticket size ticket size is your selling price per bill obviously if you upsell then instead of 20000 rupees bill there will be 80000 so therefore that will be a positive impact then if you cross sell a customer had come to buy only phone you sold him wireless earphones also now there will be two items per bill total of their sales will be the sales per bill so therefore it will have a positive impact exactly the same logic for add on selling also instead of one you are selling him two so therefore there will be two sales for each and every bill 
conversion in this case conversion of footfalls like you know and like you know those people who came and those people who bought the things now i correctly think there will be no impact because see customer in this case had thought like you know that i will buy or the customer had thought i will not be buying if a customer is not going to be buying then in that case upsell cross selling and add on does not make any difference here as such the conversion rate will be remaining same only okay if a customer didn't want to buy a product only he had just come for time pass okay now what will you upsell when what will you cross sell what will you add when he has not bought, bought the first unit only what you will upgrade him to a higher product okay what you will sell extra so therefore no change average selling price obviously if you are going to be upselling average selling price is going to be increasing now for the other two you should have thought of this depends sir what what does it depend upon suppose before you did a certain sales your average selling price was 100 per unit okay this was the average selling price now you are cross selling some other product to him now obviously average selling price might increase might decrease in fact might remain constant also i can tell you how if that cross selling product if that particular product okay has a higher price than the current average selling price of 100 then average selling price will rise here but if suppose that product has a lower price as compared to 100 then your average will also be falling sir so then if suppose that cross selling product exactly has selling price of 100 only that is same as your average then your average including that new product will be remaining same only exactly the same rules for add-on selling also then sales per square feet whatever you will do whether up sale or cross sale or add-on selling beta your sales will increase for sure in rupees but your area will be remaining same so therefore your ratio will improve no then sales through ratio sales through ratio out of how many units you received how many units you are selling see in case of up sale no there will be no impact because still you are selling one unit only so therefore that ratio will not change but under cross selling and add-on selling you are selling two units instead of one unit so therefore those two will have a positive impact actual versus target obviously it will show a positive impact see your target was something whatever you might do out of these three whatever you might do out of these three it's a simple story that uh, it's a simple story that your sales will rise and if targets will be remaining constant ratio will improve in fact point number eight if somebody wish to write you can be writing we had one more ratio this month sales versus last month sales whatever you might do under all these three options there will be a positive impact because last month sales will remain constant that period is over and whether you upsell you cross sell or you do add on selling in any particular case your answer will be remaining same only as such okay that's it whatever we all had to be doing in this question it is a brilliant question it is a brilliant question and this also like you know reminds me of one of the question that we all had done under balance scorecard whereby we had made our own kpis under those four perspectives that was your financial customer then internal and then the learning and growth here we have evolved our own kpis and we have computed them also okay ensure that you all do this question in a proper way and you remember these three techniques that is in this case your cross selling your add on selling and in this case upselling okay so this question is about internal pricing whereby one division is transferring the goods to the other division at total cost what are the disadvantages of transferring at total cost you'll start to realize in this question okay so let's start nice question whereby the comments is something like you know that you all should keep in mind might be coming in exams also peer entries curable limited is a pharmaceutical company that has many divisions one of the uh, division division a produces chemical vials that can be used for storage of medicines uh, chemical vials vials is basically kind of a cylindrical thing a storage thing kind of a glass or something like that okay in which the medicines will be stored so therefore they don't expire they don't become bad or something okay these chemical vials are both internal as well as external market so this division only makes those containers i'll call vials as containers that'll be better for me 
Division B is another department of the same company using these vials to package some of the medicines it produces. Okay, so Division B requires such kind of uh, containers. Following is the information regarding the production at Division A. Actual capacity 35 lakh chemical vials. Okay. Annual production 25 lakh chemical vials. Okay. Internal transfer to Division B. Annual 10 lakh chemical vials per year. Annual external sales 15 lakh chemical vials per year. So, therefore, this is your total capacity. But I think currently we are quite underutilized. We are only producing how much? 25 lakh chemical vials. Okay. Out of that 25 lakhs, 10 lakhs goes to division B and how much goes to the external sales here? 15 lakhs. Further, division A incurs a variable cost of 800 per vial. Wherever cost is coming, no, just write down over there cost. So, we can identify. Fixed cost of production of division A is 50 crores. Again, this is cost only. Now, this is cost, fixed cost of division A. Out of this, 15 crores is for the machinery and production infrastructure for internal sales to be okay this is also cost only are as such of 15 crores so 50 crores is supposed to be a total cost of division a out of that 15 crores is special investment which was done only to produce b okay means whatever we all produce uh, for b so it might be that we are producing those containers but for b no we are trying to have some kind of a modification of something for that that machinery is required this has been procured yeah so that has come now this has been procured to produce vials exactly as per the specifications of chemical b okay as per company's current procurement policy, since Division A is operating at less than full capacity, Division B has to purchase its entire annual requirement from Division A. Now, what like, you know, it is company's policy that Division A's total capacity was how much? 35 lakhs. But in the market, it could only sell how much? Yeah, 15 lakhs. Now, that is too less. Therefore, it has lot amount of idle capacity. So, company has a policy that Division B has to be purchasing the things from whom you are division A, else division A's capacity will remain very underutilized, no? Division A charges division B at full cost plus 2% as its transfer price. Uh, you can start to be getting vibes from here, like you know that what must be happening. See, division A is operating at less than full capacity and we are transferring at full cost. Full cost will mean all the costs, including your fixed cost also. So, if ever, Division A is producing lesser units. Your absorption rates will start to be rising. If absorption rates will rise, total cost will rise. Add markup of 2% on that. So, therefore, transfer price will also be higher. So, cost for Division B will also be higher. So, company has a policy that as Division A cannot sell everything in the market, Division B has to be purchasing from Division A. Now, this like you know will reduce the competitiveness, I think so, of Division B. Because Division B is forced to buy from Division A just because Division A has spare capacity. This is in tune with company's overall pricing policy that is used for internal, for interdepartmental transfers. Performance assessment of each departmental manager gives emphasis on the overall financial performance of the department. Okay. Recently, the manager of Division B, uh, I'll read this line once more. Performance assessment of each departmental manager gives emphasis on overall financial performance of the division. Okay. So, they do the performance uh, evaluation of each and every manager that tells like you know the company like how the department is performing financially. Recently, manager of division B receives a proposal from external vendor whereby the chemical vials can be procured for 1050 per vial. Okay. So, he has got an offer from the external supplier. The product specifications will be suitable for the requirement of division B and hence they are comparable with customized production that division A makes for division B. Okay. Required. The manager of division B would like to purchase vials from external vendor. You are required to calculate the internal transfer price based on full cost plus 2% markup. This part is the calculation part, easy part. Discuss current transfer pricing methodology, pros and cons. Okay. Should manager should the management permit division B to procure chemical vials from the external vendor advice? Now see, 
Now this advice as per me if it comes in exam should be asked for highest marks. Okay, now first of all calculate internal transfer price. Now internal transfer price is full cost plus 2%. So therefore find out your uh, full cost add 2% to that. For full cost there will be one variable cost of 800. 800 in this case into how many vials are being transferred 10 lakhs so therefore 800 into 10 lakhs that will be one thing that is your one cost in case you want on totality basis in case you want on per unit basis then in that case it will be uh, rupees 800 only let's do the things on per unit basis so one of the cost is 800 then you have fixed cost over here fixed cost of division is 50 crores but this has two parts beta out of this 15 crores is for plant and machinery only for division B. So therefore 15 crore no is only for division B. So therefore that one should be spread only over division B. So 15 crores divided by how much gets transferred over here 10 lakhs. Okay. So therefore this should be coming to 150. Further, 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 further. There is one other thing also that is nothing but uh, there is one other thing also remaining 35 crores. I guess should be spread over all the units that division A produces that is divided by 25 crores. This will start to give you your total cost. Please do remember that these two fixed costs have a different purpose. One of them is incurred for division A. Other of them is incurred like you know by division A only like the first one. But it is incurred for division B especially. So therefore whatever you transfer to division B only we should charge that amount of absorption rate. So. Uh, 35 crores divided by 25 lakhs huh? divided by 25 lakhs so 35 divided by 25 so therefore this will be coming to 140 I guess that is whatever must have been done also yeah so 800 plus 150 plus 140 290 1090 at 2% so therefore this is the thing now once you compute this now you will also start to realize that uh, this is going to be the transfer price but the other guy can purchase it from the market at what rate you have 1050 that is far cheaper no now this is the part of discuss the current transfer pricing methodology pros and cons see our current method is nothing but in this case total cost plus two percent see the moment it becomes total cost no one of the advantages for the first division is that uh, is that it gets a chance to cover up all its cost, whether it's variable cost or it's fixed, uh, fixed cost, all the cost starts to get uh, covered up. That is one thing. Plus, in this case, two percent will also give enough profit to the first division. So, therefore, when the performance assessment is being done, it will be showing good amount of profit. So, honestly, it is very good for division one for sure. Uh, division one means division A. So then what, what is the problem? The problem is that division B over here will not be good for them. Why? First of all, you all will understand division B had an offer to purchase from the outside market at what rate yeah? 1050. It's going to be purchasing the things from division A at what rate yeah? 1110. 1111.81. So if I subtract no 1111.8 minus 1050. That will be coming to 1111.8 minus 1050. That comes to 61.8 into 10 lakhs. Amount is I can see. So this division is going to be paying extra 618 lakh rupees. Okay, because it's going to be paying this figure instead of 1050. Uh, so the disadvantage over here is that first division no always try to be thinking that that division will never ever be cost conscious because it knows that whatever cost we are incurring ultimately will get charged to the next division. You know we all have done a question like this in our books also in our practical book whereby you had the biggest question I think uh, Aditya limited whereby there was an IT division, a consultant division and then a support division or something like that. So that time also one division is not controlling the cost. Why? Because it knows that its cost will be borne by the other division. So therefore that is a very big disadvantage. And second over here is that division B no is bearing the brunt of division A not using its full capacity. To give you a simple example, for division A's fixed cost was 50 crores. Out of that 35 crore rupees was incurred by division A for all the things. And 15 uh, crore rupees, I think so, yeah. So, the 15 crore rupees cost 
वॉज अ स्पेसिफिक कॉस्ट फॉर बी चलो दैट्स ओके बट द कॉस्ट दैट इज इनकर्ड फॉर ए टेक्निकली शुड बी स्प्रेड ओवर योर कैपेसिटी दैट इज नथिंग बट थर्टी फाइव लैक्स जस्ट बिकॉज डिविजन ए के नॉट सेल इट्स प्रोडक्ट इन द मार्केट सो इट्स नंबर ऑफ इन इट्स फॉल इट्स एब्जॉर्बन रेट राइजेस एंड डिविजन बी हैज टू बेर अ ब्रंट ऑफ इट बिकॉज योर पॉलिसी इज टोटल कॉस्ट प्लस मार्कअप you are not trying to be seeing what is the price of such containers such vials in the market so total cost plus wala option that we all have like you know that transfer at total cost plus something that might not be always very good especially for the receiving department because then the prices are not based upon the market conditions the prices are based upon the cost tomorrow if suppose first division starts to incur that variable cost also instead of 800 say 850 then division b will have to bear brunt of that also this doesn't make sense to us so that is whatever is going to be coming in your comments also when you are going to be doing these were the advantages but the disadvantages are all there for the other division so division b is bearing the brunt of first division not using the entire capacity apart from that in this case now division a will never ever be cost conscious okay it is being evaluated based upon profits it will always get a profit of 2% whether it controls a cost or not so these two are big problems that you all should always remember in case of total cost okay now the last part over here should the management permit division b to procure the chemical vials from the external vendor Honestly, if it is going to be doing that, it might be very good for Division B for sure, as we told, because the total cost had a problem. But then you all will also understand now. Then company will start to come into a bigger problem because Division A will become underutilized to a greatest of extent. It's uh, at least out of thirty-five lakhs of capacity. What is happening currently? What is happening currently that uh, uh, Division A is being able to use twenty-five lakhs. now if suppose division b is not there it will be only able to use 15 lakhs so that is not good so then what to do should division b pay a higher amount just because division a cannot be doing that i also don't think it is fair for uh, division b like you know it is fair to division b to pay a higher amount just because division a cannot produce at full capacity so then i do think like you know that something or the other is required first of all to adjust the transfer price and to make transfer price which is comparable to whatever is happening in the market apart from that if something like that is not possible then i think division a no should scale down its operations i think it has just invested too much amount in the infrastructure and that infrastructure is not getting used the further things i am reading from here this The external vendor is offering a similar vial at one zero five zero. Division A is going to be charging this one for it. So therefore, this costs sixty one point eight zero. That comes to six hundred eighteen lakh rupees. The same number that we also computed. Keeping the long run business interest in mind, the management of Curable Limited should direct Division A to find out the ways of optimizing its cost and making it competitive with the external market. Now, this is very important because currently we are only trying to focus on whatever is your cost you charge to Division B. That might be wrong. Why are you making Division B suffer for the inefficiencies of Division A? If there is no expectation that idle capacity will be utilized in the long run, Division A has to scale down its operations. Only Need to that much capacity that can be utilized optimally, so there should not be any idle capacity. The management of Curable Limited can even think of outsourcing the procurement of vials to the external vendor. What these guys are uh, saying, like you know, if suppose there is a chance that like you know our cost cannot be brought down, then in that case you can start to be purchasing vials from external vendor while re-evaluating the transfer price with respect to the external market. the company should also adjust its price for the costs that are not typically incurred for internal sales now this part is something we all have done in many questions you know whenever you transfer internally you no know, what happens is there are many costs that will not get incurred we all had done a it company question whereby there were three teams 
and whenever you do internal transfer price or variable cost starts to be falling down by 200 rupees or something so any other cost example if first division is producing a product okay that is required by the second division your transportation cost might not get incurred your packaging cost might not get incurred so try to adjust the things for that why you are blaming the other division that is a transfer division for the cost that it will not even be responsible to get incurred adjustments may be made for variety of costs that are incurred at a much lower price for internal sales namely the packing cost the storing cost the transportation cost the administrative cost practically no selling and distribution cost because you are directly just transferring to your other division adjustment should be made to give efforts to the estimated profit margin the external vendor earns from the sale of while at 1050 they are trying to be saying whenever you are trying to think about the transfer price we do understand first division should be getting some profit now that uh, profit should be on the same lines as whatever the external vendors make whenever they will supply to us that is out of 1050 what was the profit of the other of uh, that supplier that much profit margin we all can keep given these adjustments the transfer price should be made competitive as compared to the external market price for a similar while if division a is not being able to achieve the cost reduction and make it as competitive as a market the management may continue its current policy of internal if division a is being able to achieve the cost reduction and make it uh, competitive then the management may continue the policy of internal procurement so therefore if ever like you know the transfer price can be lowered we do understand like you know that our cost is higher than 1050 but try to make it as competitive as possible see 1050 if you can bring it uh, lower than that then nothing like it. division b will also be happy apart from that then division b would only look forward from division a to purchase the capacity of division a will also start to get utilized so this is one thing that the company can be doing and sir if it is not possible to be doing that then you should shut down division a or you should only operate the division a for the market sales at least don't let the other department suffer for the inefficiency of the other division now this was a good question whereby our total cost fund has come this is like you know you have to be understanding this that under total cost one of the very big disadvantages is that first division does not control cost only okay that's it this question is all done this question is all about target costing under target costing we always try to be thinking like this that uh, we want a certain selling price we have thought that this is a price at which we want to be launching our product from there we try to subtract our profits that we all want you start to arrive at something called as target cost and then we try to be comparing that target cost with the cost that we are incurring the difference is going to be the cost that we'll have to try to reduce it's a good concept whereby like you know we have a certain price point at which we want to be launching our product and it's a backward way of trying to arrive at the cost let's start this is question number 7 X is a leading toy manufacturing company having commenced its commercial operations in 1990. The firm has state of art manufacturing facility in India. It sells the toys through the retail outlets and the firm's website X. So therefore it's a toy manufacturing company, okay? It sells through its retail outlets and also sells through the website. X has been pioneering the concept of quality and safety in toys and has been instrumental in quality standards of toys in the Indian market. Okay. X mission is to influence parents to spend on toys to enable that enable every child to grow in quality that contributes to his or her wholesale development okay so they make the toys which are quite good in terms of quality further x procures the material from number of different suppliers this you all keep in mind all the purchased materials are dispatched to its warehouse located at its factory and held unless they are moved to the production so we purchase the materials from many suppliers and uh, the materials are stored in the warehouse once the production is happening the factory will be asking us that you send us the material so then we move the material to the production means to the factory after production is completed finished toys are moved to x retail outlets by its own vehicles each week the vehicles follows the same schedule regardless the weight they are carrying now this line is important for us so we have a fixed schedule example say that every wednesday toys will be going from the factory to the retail stores this is irrespective of whatever weight they are carrying like you know even if suppose 
there are very there are very less orders still we all try to do the transportation we all try to be thinking let there be fixed schedule irrespective of anything so sometimes trucks might be going bit empty also here further finished toys are sold through x website and are dispatched to its distribution center okay those guys saying that uh, we sell the toys through two means no either through the retail outlets or through our website that was one thing this was the second thing so those toys which are sold through the website they are transferred from the factory to it, to the distribution center x has recently got a contract to manufacture a new toy called as tyz a mini cartoon character based from a famous international animated film x has not been given any target price hence is free to set the selling price of tyz however it must pay a royalty of 10% of the selling price to the film director x is also planning to sell uh x is also planning to sell tyz through its retail outlets okay so x has got a contract to manufacture a toy called as tyz that is from some international animated film something like say the marvel something like say the iron man toys up and so on okay now <clears throat> they can set any price that they want but they have to be paying a royalty of 10% to the film director x has decided to follow target costing technique for tyz okay marketing manager has determined that selling price to be around 1750 per toy fine and x needs a margin of 26% of selling price of tyz okay so 1750 will be the target price and we need a profit margin of 26% for estimated cost per tyz refer the next chart discuss the primary activities discuss three primary activities in reality there are five or value chain through which x can minimize gap if any okay so those the required part is what here there must be some cost gap that we'll have to try to reduce for that you give suggestions now those suggestions that you will give try to give about three primary activities in all there are five inbound logistics then operations and outbound logistics marketing and sales and finally in this case uh, after marketing and sales you will have the last one after sales service okay now in extra estimated cost per tyz material c material d other materials c note below labor 0.4 hours at the rate of 1050 per hour tyz specific production overhead cost tyz specifying selling and distribution cost okay each tyz now this is important see this c note e e below or uh, c note below this is that note each tyz requires 0.7 kg of other materials these other materials are procured from the supplier at rupees 280 per kg and around 5% of all materials purchased are found to be downgraded okay now this is where the question ends now the questions required part is what find out the cost gap and give the suggestions how you can try to minimize it for that first of all in this case let's try to find out what is the cost gap here cost gap means what is your target cost what is your actual cost so the difference between them okay now see in this case no you will have done same question in rtps before also exact same question in 2020 was asked uh first of all let's try to find out target cost so therefore calculation of target cost now for target cost what do we we want first of all target selling price you all don't copy it's all printed so you all might not copy as such so this is 1750 less how much profit margin we all want i think we want 26% or something yeah it's printed over here so calci 1750 into 26% so therefore this will be coming to 455 now do remember any uncontrollable cost any uncontrollable cost can also be written over here because you would like to only target those costs which you all can compute all other costs are uncontrollable example in this question it was royalty whatever happens you have to pay royalty at the rate of 10% of selling price 175 so 1750 minus 455 minus 175 so therefore 1120 so therefore this should be your cost after excluding that royalty part so therefore this should be your target cost try to produce the product at this much price okay sir now try to be computing what is your actual cost so therefore calculation of actual cost now see all actual cost are given to you i will total these only okay i will not even write also but for other materials i will try to see what these guys have told me 
each T by Z requires 0.7 kgs of other materials. These other materials are procured from the supplier at cost of 280 per kg. Okay. And 5% of all materials purchased are found to be downgraded. See, each material will require 0.7 kgs. Okay. So, we require 0.7 kgs to be going inside the product. But whenever you purchase, 5% of that is downgraded. Okay. Means if we purchase 100, 5% is bad quality. So, therefore, how much is left? 95. Beta, this 0.7 will represent that 95 only. We'll have to purchase that 100. So, therefore, 0.7 divided by 95%. Okay. That will be coming to 0.7368 or something. I'm taking that entire thing. You go to the market and buy it. At what rate? Yeah, 280. So, multiply it by 280. So, it comes to 206.32. Okay. So... This is 206.32. Now, let's add up all our cost beta. 150.5 plus 122.5 plus 260.32 plus 420 plus 132.3 plus 166.6. So, this comes to 1198.22. This should be the figure that you all should be getting. 1198.22. Okay. So, one sec. I'll write down over here. So, your actual cost just now, obviously excluding royalty, is 1198.22. This I'm subtracting 1120 now. So, therefore, currently our cost is higher by how much? Yeah, 78.22. Now, what does the question say? It doesn't say compute this cost, but you got to be computing it as such. So, therefore, you all can start your answer. Your answer is supposed to be what? Discuss three primary activities or value chain through which X can minimize the cost gap, if any. See, currently our cost gap is how much here? 78.22. Now, we will not be able to suggest one thing that, you know, how much cost we can try to be reducing. You cannot be doing that because there is no data in this. Uh, there is no data in this question. But you got to be doing what? Sir, we got to be in this case giving just suggestions of three primary activities through which we can try to cut down our cost. Okay. Now see, if you are trying to give the suggestion, uh, it's always better like, you know, if there is any suggestion from the question that you will think that the company is doing wrong, you try to give the suggestion based upon that. There are five, there are five primary activities. Uh, inbound logistics, operations, outbound logistics, marketing and sales and after sales service. I don't think so. There is any word about after sales service, how we can try or what the company does. It's not there. Honestly, even for production, no, there are no paragraphs as such, except that production happens. That is whatever those guys have told. So in this question, honestly, there are three activities only for which some has told something inbound logistics, outbound logistics. And uh, in this case, your marketing and sales. So, let's try to have suggestions over here. Now, see, in this paragraph, you'll start to get two activities data. I think so. X procures materials from number of different suppliers. All of the purchased materials are dispatched to his warehouse located at the factory and held unless they are moved to production. So, I think one of the cause that companies will be incurring is which cause here? Carrying cause. They are stocking the goods, no? If you want to eliminate or you want to reduce carrying costs, what technique we all have uh, learned in SCMP? Just in time. So, therefore, try to follow just in time systems to, to re uh, reduce the carrying cost. You try to exactly purchase the materials at exact time that you want. But if you'll remember, like, you know, if you're saying this as a suggestion, it's a good suggestion. But then whenever you're saying this, try to say requisites also of just in time systems. You know, just in time systems look very good on paper. Sir, I exactly want the raw material that I need for production. I exactly want it at the time that I want. Don't send me the materials before. My production is about to be starting. I will tell the supplier exactly supply the quantity that I want, which is fully defect free. And once you come directly put it inside the machines only. So therefore, I don't even try to store them. My warehousing cost will fall. My carrying cost will fall. All these advantages you will get. But obviously, there is a caveat attached to this. Just in time system is a pull system that responds to the production and to the demand. You have GIT purchases, GIT production. Let me talk of GIT purchases because this is all about inbound uh, logistics. If you want just in time to happen, first of all, do remember, you got to be dealing with very less suppliers. 
all the suppliers will not supply as and when you required in the quantity that you require. So therefore, try to have limited number of suppliers first. Second, in this case, their factory should be located or their warehouse should be located very close to your factory. So therefore, whenever you want, you can call them to deliver the goods. Apart from that, GIT will always require lot amount of exchanges and synchronization of the softwares of both the companies. Both the companies mean supplier and our company. Unless and until that happens, it is very difficult to coordinate so many things. Originally, what should happen? You are about to be doing a production. You feed it inside the computer. Computer should automatically compute how much material is required. Automatically, a message should be going to the supplier. Please send us this. Supplier should be doing the inspection. Or if we want, we will send our engineers over there for inspection. Once the inspection is done, we directly get defect-free material. If such kind of infrastructure is possible, then in that case, it makes some damn sense, okay, to having just-in-time system. Although there is a great advice, okay. This is all about your this part. Second. Outbound logistics. I think outbound logistics is basically an activity whereby our finished goods are transported to our distribution centers. I think there is one flaw that is mentioned over here. Each week, the scheduling happens in the same way, irrespective of the weight it carries. Example, from stores, from a retail stores, orders for toys are very less. Our truck still goes. Let there be less stuff in that, but then truck will still go. The other part, that is in this case, uh, <clears throat> the amount of weight is very high. Trucks are overloaded. Trucks are overloaded. It will still go. Now, both these things are not good. One is too less, one is too high. So, in reality, what should happen? You should try to schedule the deliveries based upon the orders. Okay. Try to have a good logistic system whereby based upon the response, sorry, based upon like, you know, the requisitions from the stores, you try to send the material uh, over there. It will make better sense to like, you know, have a scheduling system in place so therefore trucks do not go empty and your fuel cost is utilized in the most optimal way in such case it will not be wrong for us to be mentioning that there should be a good edi system also electronic data interchange system which can track like you know that how much materials we have to carry up and so on that will always make your system more robust okay that is all about your outbound logistics. Okay, then last one in this case, marketing and sales. And that thing I can try to be saying, I got one problem over here that this new toy, you know, we will be only selling through our retail outlets. Better, apart from this, you can always sell through your websites also. When you sell it through your website, do remember that uh, first big advantage is that you are not restricted to a local place. Website is worldwide web here. So automatically, like, you know, you'll be getting orders from everywhere. So why to only sell this new toy through our retail stores? You can start to sell that through your web uh, websites also. Yes, your courier cost will be extra. We do understand. But currently also you are sending the materials to the retail store. That's also a cost. You might be giving good margin to the stores. People also here. There is no margin as such. And entire world is a market. So why not to try that option? Those guys have told us three. We all have done three. Okay. That's it about this question. It's a nice question, but we have done it before. So I didn't want to be taking uh, so much amount of time, although I have, dealt, I have dealt with the things in depth. Now, one thing, many questions I'm not trying to be reading because like, you know, I'm saying all the crux that like, you know, should enter your mind. Once I am done with each and every question, you can always read the points. You will be able to understand all the things that we are doing. It's quite simple here. Okay, done. <coughs> this question is all over. This question number eight is all about that there is a company that is doing a laundry service, suddenly gets a big order from a hotel. It wants to be thinking accept or reject and with the other factors. Now, honestly, part two of this question is framed in a very poor manner. And I don't think so unless until you will read the answer. Actually, you will understand what the part second of the question is asking. It is impossible for anybody to be inferring from the question what you have to answer in part two. Other part, part 1 and part 3 is quite simple. Let's start. A to Z, one of the largest laundry service providers for suits. The firm has set a price of 510 for cleaning a suit set. A to Z derive this price as follows. Cleaning materials 35, you can keep your uh, calces going because by adding up all these numbers, we should be getting 510. Uh, cleaning materials 35, labor 3 hours at the rate of 50 per hour. So add 150 to 35. 
add variable overheads of 70, add fixed overheads 3 hours at the rate of 15, that is 45. Okay, you total up all these costs, I guess that should be coming to 300 and then you add markup of 70%. So, that will give you 510. A to Z is known for quality work and timely delivery, hence customers are willing to pay this premium price. So, those guys saying that our quality is very good, okay, we are known for our quality and that is why, like, you know, the customers pay very high price for our cleaning services. Firms employees receive a fixed salary, this is super important. The hourly rate of rupees 50, this figure, this figure, this figure is derived as, is uh, arrived at by dividing total salary by total number of hours available. So, this rate per hour now 50 is actually not 50 per hour beta. We pay them fixed salary. So, what we must have done, done something like absorption costing, whatever is our labor cost now, that is actually salary paid to all these people, okay. So, salary paid, we divided that particular thing by number of hours that gave us that rupees 50 per hour. So, in reality, like you know, this is not a time basis system that you are paying the workers for, no. It's a fixed salary, just those guys gave you per hour by taking salary divided by number of hours, okay. For the variable overheads depends upon the number of suits cleaned, whereas fixed overheads rate is arrived at by dividing total cost of all related expenses by number of labor hours available, okay. Fixed overheads generally include office rent and admin salary, okay, fine. So, those guys saying this fixed overheads also know how we all have got this particular thing. We all have taken all our fixed overheads and fixed overheads mainly include the office rent and admin salary. These will be the fixed cost here. Again, we are dividing that thing by total number of labor hours. Now, this is whatever you normally do. Now, a special offer starts from here. A local hotel approach A to Z as the regular cleaners of these suits are on strike. About the possibility of cleaning 130 suits in the coming week and they need the work on a rush basis. Rush basis means they want the work to be done urgently by us. Okay, now do remember we are known for our quality. Okay, these guys want the work to be done urgently. So, in such cases, honestly speaking, like you know, it what should be your pricing will always be a matter of discussion. Somebody can always be thinking, sir, those guys are in urgent need, sir. So, bargaining power of ours will be very high, sir. Those guys, regular cleaners are on strike, no? So, therefore, they want the work to be done. It's a hotel who has to service the clients, okay? So, they, they want, like, you know, the suits to be done, like, on an urgent basis. So, we should charge them very high. This is one side, but the other side is also there. They might have approached not only us, but many other people. So, therefore, like, you know, at that time, if you consider this scenario, then we might have to quote as less as possible to get this order. It might happen that once we do a nice job with these people, they might throw out their regular clients, or oh, sorry, their regular cleaners and give the further contracts to us. So, both these are the, uh, like, you know, two sides of a coin. Further, A to Z has sufficient quantity of required cleaning material in stock for the special order. Okay. So, we have enough quantity of a cleaning material but then you do remember this cleaning material that we all have must be a regularly used stock yeah that will require for our normal cleaning also if we use anything out of the special order if we all use anything for the special order we'll have to replace it that's quite obvious i think it's not some extra material that was lying with us or something okay further it perceives that it could complete 60 percent of the special order during the normal working hours okay However, to complete the remaining 40%, some employees will have to work overtime. Okay. Overtime premium is paid at, uh, overtime hours are paid at a premium, which could normally be time and a half normal hourly rate. Okay. Required. Advise the price it shall quote for the special order. Fine. Advise the price it should quote for the special order. Does the special order decision deal with excess supply or excess demand? Advice, sorry, analyze. This part, as I was saying, if you read the answer, only then you realize what ICA had in mind. It's very difficult. Let me come to that and then I'll speak further. Last part. Whether such special order should be accepted on rush basis. Now see, many times in business, you will get that situation and we all have done, to be very honest, more than 10 questions like this, that you are doing your regular business. Suddenly, one day a special order comes. So, to that special order, you try to be thinking, let me try to quote as less as possible and let me try to back this order. 
now if there is a chance that this contract is one time now but will become a regular contract in future then you like to grab this opportunity for that you will have to be quoting less but sometimes vice versa is also true as i told suppose like you know you all think this will be one time job only here these guys are only coming to us because their regular clients are on strike uh, the regular cleaners are on strike so therefore sir after this those guys will not be coming to us let me mint money now only let me try to charge as high as possible okay now as high as possible to be very honest you will not be able to charge more than 510 i don't think so because that is whatever you are charging to your normal clients okay so anything uh, near to that will be okay but somebody can always be saying nahi sir there is a chance that we will be getting long term contract so let's try to quote as less as possible in that case what i can try to be saying let me try to fix the minimum price first and then i'll talk of all these things so minimum price for this order will be the extra cost that you all will incur sir extra cost means how much order we all have got cleaning of 130 suits now 60% will be completed during the normal working hours and remaining 40% will have to be done in overtime in overtime workers will be paid at 150% of the normal rate so try to find out incremental cost for this order beta now incremental cost is going to be very simple so first of all you will incur material 130 into 35 that will be your material cost now labor do remember was a fixed cost and uh, i think so we have got some excess supply of labor so like you know our workers will be idle for some time but workers get fixed salary so during their normal hours i tell them to do any work i don't have to be paying anything extra to them but yes 40% will be work 40% will be such work that will be done over time so 130 into 40% into in this case 3 hours these will be the extra hours in the overtime okay and in overtime we are going to be paying 150% of the normal rate so therefore 150% of this will be 75 per hour this will be our incremental which cost beta labor cost then variable overheads is uh, 70 per suit i think correct no i think variable overheads was given to you somewhere also see it is given to you somewhere yeah variable over is depend upon number of suits clean so therefore 130 into 70 you calculate these things and you divide that by 130 suits you will be able to get your incremental cost that is whatever is done over here see 130 into 35 130 into 40% into 3 into 75 rupees and then 130 suits into 70 this will give you your incremental cost divide this figure by 130 and this is your relevant cost this is 195 now see below everything that we discuss like you know is all mentioned over here however in decision making other conditions are equally important for example if this one time deal is there with no repeat business then a to z might would like to charge a premium they like to take like you know this opportunity and try to earn as much as possible but if suppose is going to be is suppose the company thinks in long term no uh if we get this order we will keep on getting orders like this then in that case the price that you will be quoting will be as low as possible somewhere above 195 and somewhere near to 195 as compared to 510 because you like to grab this chance and one thing that will push down the price more is that if suppose you come to know that this hotel has not only approached us it has approached some of our rivals also so therefore you will be able to get the contract only if only if only if you try to quote as less as possible you know this thing we all have done in sealed bid pricing also once okay in our external pricing chapter okay chali so that is whatever is given to you the prospect of getting a foot in the door to quote the future business will push the price downwards however a to z can price based upon both short term benefits from accepting the order and long term consequences fine this is our part first now part second it's like you know a g part here does special order decision deal with excess supply or excess demand analyze honestly in some cases like you know when i read the answer then i realized like you know they are asking you does it deal with excess supply or excess demand abhi excess supply or excess demand or what i did not understand actually so then i read the answer those guys are talking of each and every element of cost like you know that all these elements of cost these ones like you know material then labor all these things you have excess supply or excess demand they are trying to say about that so like you know for materials you all have like you know some materials which is lying with you 
I think you have extra materials which is lying with you. So, if you use any materials out of this and suppose the materials get finished, then you will need to be purchasing extra materials from the market for your regular business or the other way around. Suppose like you know you have too much amount of excess stock, okay. But this stock you will have care for the regular business. If you use anything out of this, still something will be left. Whatever is left in any case will be used for the regular business. Honestly, like you know this, you all can speak but it doesn't make much amount of sense. Same way for your labor also. I think for labor case now, for labor, you had some excess supply of labor. That is why 60% of our product will get completed during the normal time only. Rest 40% we all have in short supply. For that we all work overtime. Fixed cost in any case will remain constant. For variable overheads, we will be taking that cost. Okay, because that will be incurred whenever we all will be producing the suits. Now these things are only given. I don't know actually why, uh, why they asked this part. Such special order definitely gives A to Z an opportunity to earn more profits. However, other aspects also need to be analyzed. There, in a, there is an excess of cleaning materials. If the current special order does not use up the available stock, the firm could store the cleaning materials for later use. This in any case will do only, you know. It is most likely that A to Z fixed overheads cost will not change due to the special order. We all know that only, which mainly consists of the rent and admin salary. So, means even if you say this line, where is the question of excess supply or excess demand in this year? If 60% of the special order could be completed during the normal hours, then the firm clearly has some excess capacity in terms of labor hours. However, for remaining 40%, labor will have to be working though, uh, as overtime and paid 1.5 times. Okay, this clearly, like you know, it indicates different resources have different capacity levels, a decision that might impose constraints on a particular resource. It is necessary to consider the opportunity cost for each resource while computing the total cost of a special order now this is just actually trying to ask some nonsense okay like you know without any lo uh, logic so it is impossible actually to infer that you have to be seeing this so you have to be seeing about each and every cost whether you have excess supply or in this case you have excess demand or something okay actually i'll say about part three advice whether such order should be accepted on rush basis comment now see Rush basis means urgent basis. Now, such orders, should they be accepted or not? Now, in this case, now that laundry service is very much known for its quality. Now, if it is known for its quality, no. If we are going to be completing the order super fast, will your quality get hampered? If there is a chance it will get hampered, then do remember, don't accept such orders. Because in future, you will never get a single order also. So, destroying your quality and then supplying might not be a good idea. You may, you may get good amount of profits also. But if by rushing, you are going to be destroying your cleaning service, that is one of the big things. Then in that case, it is not a very good idea. That is whatever is told over here. There are two sides in this scenario. On one side, firms can earn more profit by taking the special order. On the other side, orders received need to be delivered urgently. Therefore, accepting such rush orders may affect the quality of the service and timely delivery and may not be compiled with. However, the goodwill and the brand name will be affected, which in turn will affect the future profitability. Though immediate monetary benef uh, benefits are seen, long-term consequences also need to be analyzed before accepting such rush orders. The firm manager, would need to consider both short-run benefits from accepting and the long-term consequences on profitability. So, if you're going to be destroying the quality for long-term, it might not be very good because you might not be getting the future orders only and your goodwill might also get spoiled. And see a hotel, no, like, you know, one customer cannot try to do much. But if suppose you try to give bad service to a hotel who gives you a very bad order, who gives you a very big order, then this could affect your goodwill in the long run. They might start to tell to the other hotels, Ki, don't get the things clean from this laundry service is bad. So therefore, from long run point of view, if the quality will get destroyed, not very good. If the quality will not get spoiled and you can deliver the product on the rush order, then nothing like it. Okay. So you will have to be thinking like, you know, that what is important? Money is also important that you are going to be getting. Apart from that, keeping the quality is also important. From long run, quality will matter more. From short run, the profitability will matter more. So try to be thinking on these lines before you make your final decision. Okay, that's it. This question is all done. Now, this question is only about trying to prepare a reconciliation statement, nothing else. It's a simple, straightforward question. The data is given to you. You just compute the variance. Maximum at two or three places, we got to be doing something. 
During September 21, Mr. W offers bundling, offers bundling and item packing facilities for standard size 24 inches into 12 inches into 10 inches. To give best facility to satisfy its industrial customers needs at Great Ocean Warehouse. Okay. Uh, w plans to pack 93,580 items at the rate of 4.5 per item. So basically it's a warehousing company that like you know uh, gives the packing facilities in standard size. So in this much uh, uh, in this size of boxes it does all these things. W estimates that variable cost all resources will be equal to 1.5 per item packed and fixed cost will be equal to 58,000. Okay. Fine. Uh, so selling price is 4.5. It's going to be packing these many items. Uh, variable cost is 1.5 per item packed and fixed cost that is rental electricity will be equal to 58,000 per annum uh, per month. In September 21, it packed 112500 items and received 506250 as total revenue. Okay. However, it paid 180000 on resources, including urgent purchases of tape at retail price. Okay. In addition, in addition, in addition, uh, W also paid 78,000 to the warehouse administration for rent, electricity and maintenance. This past September was unusually hot and W is charged a percentage of warehouse actual electricity bill. Now, it could be happening like, you know, that this guy is occupying part of the warehouse space. Okay, not the complete warehouse. So, therefore, he has to be paying the electricity also, the proportionate one. Prepare a budget reconciliation report along with suitable analysis. Now, this question I have done somewhere. I am quite sure about it. Might be there in the modules also. I think so. Okay, prepare a budget reconciliation statement along with suitable analysis. Okay, so you just have to prepare a reco statement. Okay, with suitable analysis. For now see, quite simple one, uh, budgeted, we all have thought we are going to be selling or packing these many items. We have actually done these many items, okay. Per unit, we should be charging 4.5. This 4.5 is over here. Our variable cost should have been 1.5. That 1.5 is over here. So contribution that we should be getting is 3 rupees. Now, in reality, no, one other thing also, our fixed cost was supposed to be 58,000 per month. So, therefore, that fixed uh, 58,000 is over here. So, revenue less variable cost will give you contribution. Less fixed cost will be giving you all profits. Okay, further. However, W paid 1,80,000 on resources. Uh, so, that 1,80,000 is over here. In addition, uh, 70,000 rupees was paid to the warehouse for rent up and so on. So, therefore, uh, 70,000 rupees was paid. Now, two things. This 1,80,000 of variable cost, that included urgent purchase of tape. So, tape must be their raw material. We have to purchase something on an urgent basis. So, obviously, rates will be higher than IR. Okay. So, that is why, like, you know, this cost is higher. Uh, Apart from that, in this case, this charges is also quite high as compared to this because saying like, you know, that this past September was very hot. So, therefore, we had to be charging a percentage of warehouse electricity bill. So, therefore, entire uh, warehouse say was not occupied by us, only part of it. So, warehouse must be like, you know, incurring that electricity and charging it to us. So, that is the reason. Now, see, uh, this much is the total revenue that has come over here divided by 112500 so 4.5 is the actual selling price also okay 180 divided by this figure so actual variable cost was 1.6 per unit. it was slightly higher than whatever we all had thought as 1.5 the reason for that because we purchased some tapes on urgent basis those packing tapes because we pack the things in boxes so therefore we'll require those tapes and all no it was purchased on an urgent basis so, we have done simple thing over here. Sales minus variable cost will be giving you contribution. Less fixed cost will be giving you all profit. So, that's what I have done. So, then you start to compute the variances because those guys have told, like, you know, prepare budget reconciliation report. Try to be finding out your budget in this case was this. But then you got this much amount of profit. Why the hell you have got more or less profit? Okay. So, then in that case, start to be finding all your variances. You will come to know, know exactly what happened. So, first of all, total net profit variance, that is this minus this. Now, 
try to do its analysis okay so in that case analysis means breakup so roman number one net profit balance due to change in sales i see it does not know how to compute it directly so it does its breakup its breakup is selling price balance that is how much price you should have sold how much price you have sold into this figure ultimately it will be nil second contribution volume balance how many units you should have sold minus how many units you have sold into contribution per unit over here so that is whatever i have done so this variance is nil this variance is favorable because we have sold more number of units so overall 33000 was favorable but i think in terms of sales we have done good job because we have packed more number of packets and due to that we got this much amount of extra contribution then roman number 2 net profit variance due to change in cost now net profit variance due to change in cost in this case uh, first of all in this case your variable cost your variable cost uh, variable cost is dependent upon output okay we all have done that in so many questions now see this is net profit variance due to change in cost now cost can be broken up into two parts one is variable one is fixed but then how we compute the variances is totally different beta how we compute the variance of variable cost what should have been the variable cost per unit what was the actual variable cost per unit into actual quantity of output that was this particular figure 112500 so therefore this was 11250 adverse now one of the reasons that this particular variance was adverse one of the reasons might not be only reason that we have paid higher price for the tapes but I don't know is tape the only like you know cost or not I think so like you know it might not be the only variable cost there could be other variable costs which are included as part of 1.5 and as part of 1.6 there could be other cost also so therefore then in that case uh, 1.5 over here 1.6 over here so tapes rates have increased and that is why some increase might have happened it could have uh, also happened that we have used the raw material that is the tapes in a proper way and usage variance could be favorable that also could have happened and then in that case this 112500 no is the total variance okay overall we have done slightly bad job over here but then it could be that rate paid was higher but then usage was better it could be that particular thing okay that's it now your this work is done okay your this work is done uh that is whatever i have written over here and adverse variable cost variance can uh, arise as w had used more resources per item packed or he paid more than the budgeted resources used there is not adequate data to segregate w's variable cost variance into price and quantity we don't have that data so that's what i told we just have the overall things 1.5 and 1.6 we don't have the breakup of 1.5 that is quantity into rate same way we don't have this particular breakup of 1.6 also the quantity into rate like you know we all make a format no for material your quantity rate amount all that information is not there to compute these variances we would require the amount of resources w budgets should be used per item packed and the actual price of each resource while the issue appears that w's adverse variable cost variance is due to spending more on tapes it is not sure that this entire variance is attributable to this fact it could it could be that uh, tape price variance was greater than 11,250 uh, 11, the price variance okay but then in this case the usage variance or the quantity variance was favorable to offset this so net answer was 11250 adverse okay now expenditure variance in this case fixed over its expenditure variance so 58,000 less 70,000 this figure in this case was 12,000 adverse that's it uh here also you can try to be mentioning that one of the reasons like you know that electricity bill was higher is because of extra heat in the month of september and therefore this uh, warehouse had to be sharing more amount of that now all these variances we try to convert that into a reco statement the way that we all have done in all our questions in standard costing so budgeted profit okay actual profit okay you write down all your variances net profit variance due to change in sales selling price variance contribution volume variance then in cost you had two parts variable cost and fixed cost okay this is your final answer and that's it it all gets okay with this with this your entire question is over it's a simple question just you should be knowing like you know that which variances you all can be computing now this question is just about a simple part of classification of cost and nothing else okay it could have been asked at ca inter level also i don't know why they have put that at ca final level so please read 
स्वस्तिक लिमिटेड मैन्युफैक्चर इन सेल्स फोर वॉल्व इंजिन दिस मस्ट बी द कोड ऑफ दैट डी टी के आई कंपनी अपॉइंट मिस्टर वॉटसन टू कॉर्डिनेट शिपमेंट ऑफ डी टी के फ्रॉम फैक्ट्री टू द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन वेयर हाउसेज लोकेटेड इन वेरियस पार्ट ऑफ इंडिया सो दैट गुड्स विल बी अवेलेबल एज ऑर्डर्स आर रिसीव फ्रॉम द कस्टमर्स ओके सो दिस गाय मिस्टर वॉटसन इज दे फॉर वॉट ही इज फॉर कॉर्डिनेटिंग द शिपमेंट्स वी हैव टू बी सेंडिंग द गुड्स फ्रॉम फैक्ट्री to all the warehouses that we all have in india okay so therefore goods will be available whenever the orders are received from the customer so therefore he is kept for coordinating the distribution swastik uh, limited is unsure how to classify his annual salary of 24 lakh rupees in its cost records honestly our entire syllabus does not talk of costing records as such okay we are not trying to do accounting of anything in scmp but still i don't know why this rtp has come The company's cost analyst say that Mr. Watson's salary should be classified as manufacturing cost. The finance controller say that it should be classified as selling cost. The MD says that it does not matter which way the salary cost is classified. Honestly, it might make an impact on some of the stocks that you all have, okay? Because the valuation changes. If suppose that is a criteria, which viewpoint is correct? Comment. Honestly, it does matter. Okay, like you know, your costing records will differ. Your valuations will start to be different. Now he has been kept what basically to coordinate the shipments from the factory to the warehouse. In terms of say, like you know, your activities, this is part of outbound logistics. So he is part of selling and distribution. So I think it has to be classified as selling and distribution cost. so if you have a separate head for distribution it should be coming in distribution if you do not have then in that case it should be part of your combined head of selling and distribution It's very simple he is not talking he is not taking care of the manufacturing part beta he is trying to be taking care of the distribution part so that is whatever must have been printed selling cost will include all the cost necessary to secure customers orders and get the finished product in the hands of the customers the responsibility of mr watson as described in the problem is the coordination of the shipments from dtki from the factory to the distribution warehouse and same would fall in this class okay his job is basically to take care of the distribution work no from the factory to the warehouse accordingly finance controller is correct that his salary should be classified as part of selling cost easy question yaar as such so guys we'll do our last question on this is match the following to be very honest match the following will never ever come in your exams i don't know why institute tries to put all these things in the rtps so there were 28 of them in fact out of out of that pardon me for one okay because i tried to find out but i couldn't like you know get the answer to it to be very honest so that i'll tell you all if you all do get it then you all do tell me if i'll get it in future i'll, I'll put that thing on uh, the telegram channel now uh let's start this is uh <coughs> match the following 28 i have already written the answers in gray i will just explain the meaning of the sentence and that's it okay now first one the five forces model provides five forces model by Mo michael pot uh, michael porter basically gives you an analysis that how much profit a industry will be giving it's basically about that bargaining power of buyers suppliers threat of the new entrants and how much uh, how much are the barriers to the entry those things that you'll have done okay five forces model provides a clear and a precise methodology for analyzing an organization's industries environment and to determine obviously its profitability that's the reason why michael porter's five forces are there the more substitutes buyer will have for a industry's product obviously if a buyer will have more substitutes bargaining power of buyer will be higher so seller will be lower so bargaining power of buyers is going to be higher okay but the bargaining power of seller will be lower so industry will be having low amount of profitability because the supplier cannot be charging very high prices no if he charges a high price customers will start to shift to the competitor so therefore industry will be having lower profitability the higher barriers to entry are there in a in the industry like telecom defense up and so on obviously the lower will be threat of the new entrants because you require huge amount of capital here to enter these segments and obviously the industry's profitability will be higher the exact reason is because customers will be very much but then the sellers will be very few like in case of a telecom now so you have like you know only few companies that are left now in india in the telecom sector new companies cannot enter because lot amount of money is required 
Fast food company has opted for a limited range. Has opted to offer a limited range. The strategy is most likely to be focus strategy. What do you mean by a focus strategy? You don't concentrate on the entire market. You concentrate on a niche segment. Example, say by juice. Okay, it concentrated when it started. Concentrated on a very niche market that was nothing but the online market. In that also, they only concentrated till ten standard. so like you know it is a niche market now niche market if you concentrate on you might be making good profits but you will make good profits till the time other companies will not enter if this segment will be profitable other companies will start to enter and then the market will start to get disrupted okay then again the question on focus strategy only focus strategy refers to when an organization concentrates its efforts on a narrower part of the market not the entire market but a narrower part of the market okay further diversification involves developing new products and services to sell in the new markets this is obviously highest risk option you are trying to diversify in new products and new services whereby you are not much known okay and in the new markets so one risk is over here of the new products and services you are trying to develop new product in the new market so therefore there is double risk so risk becomes very high yaar first of all markets are also like you know you are new to the markets and your products are also new so therefore obviously in that case like you know the risk will become very high the secondary activity dealing with acquisition of input is which uh, activity under secondary activities of value chain you have four of them procurement then uh, human resource technology and lastly firm infrastructure so acquisition of inputs i guess is procurement only then six sigma seeks to improve the quality of the output of a process by identifying the cause of defects obviously answer is going to be six sigma only six sigma is basically a quality improvement technique how it tries to eliminate the defects and then in that case like you know it tries to improve the quality in that also you all have done uh, d mac up and so on okay so there are two parts of that but then it is basically a quality improvement technique then further differentiation advantage can be achieved by superior customer responsiveness obviously if you respond to the customer better your services are viewed to be better you will have a product differentiation the other model is low cost advantage model whereby you try to charge the lower prices but obviously through superior customer responsiveness in that case your differentiation uh, will start to be happening further by understanding how value chain is designed or configured encompassing the efficiencies cost and value that can be created for the customer the organization can better position itself against the industry's competitors and pursue is chosen generic strategy uh generic means something that can be applied in most of the cases okay so therefore like you know your value chain is basically designed not for one company or specific type of companies is designed for every type of company so therefore you can go for the strategy that you all have selected now not a very nice question actually to be asking for the target cost means not target cost means take your target selling price subtract from their target profit you'll start to arrive at target cost means a product cost estimate derived by subtracting desired profit margin from obviously competitive a uh, market price that we usually call as target price target price can also be the price of the nearest uh, competitor no that is there further point number 12 cost plus pricing might seem to be an an attractive option but its problem is that it ignores market conditions and they might lead to a market a price which is too high or too low in fact this is exact thing that we all have done in one of the sums of uh, this very rtp only under cost plus pricing like you know we completely ignore the market price we just try to be saying what is the cost of the first division have some kind of a markup and then try to be doing the disadvantage that first division will never ever like to control cost okay then further performance pyramid is based on range of objectives for both external effectiveness which is related to this was the fill in the blanks and internal efficiency which is related to productivity try to see your performance pyramid beta on left hand side now you all have external effectiveness on right hand side you have internal efficiency that you will be getting whenever you have your productivity but your left hand side is basically external efficiency you will be getting whenever you try to satisfy the customer in that also try to look at your performance pyramid i'm not going to be telling you that there are two ways how to be achieving customer satisfaction see that performance pyramid that will be better the last two things on the bottom of the pyramid further in tpm unplanned downtime includes equipment breakdown and unplanned maintenance you all are aware of that so tpm is there for that only 
Six Sigma can be used with dash technique by providing more data through measurement system based upon the statistics. Obviously, your balance scorecard is a wholesome kind of a performance management system. It measures everything here that you all can. Okay, then uh, W manufactures toy babies in lots of 7,000 and then approaches various independent toy shops trying to convince them to stack, stock the toys baby on their shelf. This is an example of dash supply chain. Beta supply chain are of push type and pull type. We make first and then we try to be selling. So therefore, there is nothing but push market. Okay, then further. <coughs> Under pull market, we respond to the demand. Okay, then 17. Dash should include expected response time for technical queries. That is service level agreement. We had a question on this also, I guess. This was one of the extra case studies that I have put and I would also put this thing on the telegram channel also. Like suppose like, you know, we enter into an agreement with a call center and then we all tell them that whenever a call comes to you within five seconds, you should be able to answer. All these things will be there in your SLA that is service level agreement. Okay, further. A service provider such as reputed CA firm depends on quality staff to deliver quality service. This is an example of recruiter markets. Okay, there is nothing so great about it actually. I don't know why this question is asked. Then, 19th. A supermarket sets up just-in-time arrangement with a supplier for short life items such as ready to eat food in order to retain customer interest in instant food product. This is example of which markets? So, institute says in this case, supplier's market because you are heavily dependent upon the supplier to deliver the things to you and then you will be able to sell. So, therefore, it becomes kind of a supplier market. Supplier will always have an upper hand in this. Bank refers customers to the provider of insurance services. This is example of which markets? The referral markets. Now, a referral markets, a basic example. Suppose you go to a doctor, okay, he prescribes you the medicine. Towards the end, he'll tell you, buy the medicine from this shop huh, and refer my name. They will give you 2% discount. Now, that is one thing that shop will give us 2% discount, but they will give the doctor around 10 or 15% commission. Okay, this is a referral market. Further, W insurance firm was worried about the poor performance of one of its policies. Uh, it was found that policy was not profitable when sold to recently retired people. Otherwise, it was profitable. This is an example of cap analysis. I don't know the full form of cap analysis. Hence, I cannot be commenting. I told you there is one question that I am not being aware. So, you know, there are customer aware programs. I know that cap will usually mean that. But I don't know what is cap analysis. Might be in reference to that. If I will come to know, I will put that on the telegram channel. Further. Improving position of a firm in search engine listings for key terms or phrases relates to obviously customer acquisition. If you put your listing on Google search engines up and so on, that will help you to acquire the customers. 23rd, Dash will tie into organization overall strategy and that will be your key success, your uh, critical success factors only, na? okay, because these are the things that you need to be achieving. So therefore, in our strategy, these things will always be there. Suppose you want to capture the market, that is your CSF, that will go inside your strategy, right? KPIs for efficient performance for efficient production could include maximum liters of acetic acid uh, wasted. KPIs, key performance indicators for efficient production will always include like you know all those measures to show that your wastages are less. Those things are called as your KPIs only. Okay, so there uh, here the KPI will be amount of uh, acetic acid wasted further. 25th, principle of controllability is required when using financial measures to assess divisional performance. Now, we can assess the performance based upon the financial measures or non-financial. Under controllability, this was the first thing that we all had done in standard costing also. Only try to blame the department for the things that they can be controlling. Okay. And this will obviously be coming under financial measures only. And non-financial measures will not get distorted by, uh, by uh, inflation. Example, your quality then number of units returned, okay, all these particular things could be non-financial. Now, these non-financial things will never ever get distorted by inflation. Example, the training or the number of new products that the company had launched, these are non-financial measures. These do not get distorted by inflation. In fact, the financial measures will get distorted. Example, in balance scorecard, when we all had started, we all had told this, sales increase of 10% is good. So, increase in sales is a financial measure. But then, if inflation was 12%, then this performance is very bad here. Further, 
W has its staff targets relating to improvements in the number of customer complaints received in relation to performance pyramid. It is related to which level? It is related to the last level. Okay, you all can try to see how to improve the customer satisfaction. You try to be doing these things. Okay, then next. Under building block model, the CSF for the business are referred to as the dimensions. Uh, dimensions are the goals to be achieved. Okay, goals to be achieved are nothing but your CSF only. Okay, now don't be under the impression in exam match the following will be coming. They will not be coming. Just uh, ICA or in all the RTBs, no, last two or three questions, they just put to complete like, you know, their 11 questions. Now, my job is done. I make it an attempt always to be doing all the questions okay in a detailed manner so therefore in case you want like you know how the paper should be written what all you all should know all those things you all know i'll see you all next time in the next rtp thank you so much